It is Paradise Valley Speedway. Look at a picture. And welcome to one and all on behalf of the Rotorua Stock Car Club and, of course, our meeting sponsors, Technical Welding Services. We welcome you all in. And uh, I must say, it's so nice looking from our commentary position across this track surface and the racing oval to the terraces and seeing umbrellas being used to keep the sun off. As, as, opposed to, <laughs> as opposed to the rain. Uh, it is all part of our build-up to night number two of this New Zealand Superstock Championship and what a, what a ride it's been uh, across the first six days of uh, 2021 from that shakedown night on uh, the first where we had 108 cars through the scrutineering and then the dramas and the rain outs over the next few nights to last night, which was spectacular. And tonight, well, I don't, you know, I, I would like to say that I'm hoping things erupt on track. And, oh, you know, you never know, but I, I don't know, I've, I've got a feeling. You come and have a look under the rear end, and you'll find in the back of this, this is my camera and follows me, and I'll, I'll point to it. Down in here, he'll get down there and have a look, there's a plate that comes off the back of that diff. What they do is they pull the plate off, and they put a different gear set in there, because what's happening from that is that's how they change the ratios or drive speeds or, or different setups for the cars. Those cars like Beersley's are normally engaged to a Raptor gearbox which comes out of the States or a ZF gearbox. Two speed and the ZFs are four speeds. I go back to a ZF's the old CF Bedford motor but that's about where we're going from there. Down the centre there but so that's how they change ratios between a gearbox with a solid diff versus a diff that has uh, gears that you can take in and out. A lot quicker to change the diff gears very good team to change a gearbox during a race meeting, but the Joblins are good at that, and they're practised. Why do they come here with a thing like that? Because they've been here so many times, they know what gearbox fits here at Rotorua. Over to you, Paul, but more tech talk from Minty. We're doing pretty well over here. Yeah, that's uh, all very interesting, Minty, that the technical stuff you're presenting us with uh, tonight and across the course of this weekend, even though we're the middle of the week, I'm still going to call it the weekend. Uh, thank you for that. It's, it's really exciting to learn just to how these machines work and to get the uh, best out of them on a racetrack like Paradise Valley Speedway. But for the drivers to get out here on the racetrack, they need a racetrack to race on. And uh, right now I'm standing out here just outside the pit gate. And next to me is the man who's responsible for making the track. He's dead. Come over this way. Stan Hickey uh, is the uh, man who puts all the work into uh, putting this track together. Uh, firstly, it must have been a, a pretty rough few days, obviously, after that, that uh, shakedown night for the rain to come through. What, what were your first thoughts uh, at that point, thinking about the, the actual track surface? No, I wasn't too worried because we knew the rain was coming, so I got the track as hard as I could um, the few days before um, New Year, I think it was. Um, yeah, so it was fairly hard and uh, should have kept the water out of it, most of it. So lots of rain on it, but nice and hard underneath. Last night, the track, did, were you concerned before the cars went out onto the track with what might happen uh, once they were on there? Not really, no. Um, it was a bit soft in a few places and it did cut out and... In front of the um, corporate box there, um, the uh, club rooms, and down on turn four there was a bit of a hole there, but it wasn't too bad. Um, but hopefully tonight I've got it better. So tell us about what, what is this surface, because you know there, there's so much technology and work in, in different types of dirt and clays that you can use. We see different colours at different tracks around the country. What is this here under the tyres in uh, Paradise Valley? Uh, it's mainly a thermal clay um, we dug it out a few years ago um, and stockpiled it from the um, hospital, the new hospital up there. So it's a real thermal white and red clay. And tell us what you've done with it. We, we saw a lot of work going on this afternoon with, with the grader out here. And uh, what, what were you actually doing there to, to achieve tonight's result? Uh, I don't really want Sonia to hear what I did because <laughs> she'll say, you better be right. <laughs> so we're hoping you're right? Yeah, no, it should be good, um, but it's taken all day. We started on about 10 this morning and we've only basically just finished. Uh, the problem was getting enough water in, not too much water, um, and, you know, I did have to rip it and uh, relay it, but, uh, yeah, no, I think we've got it down hard enough, and uh, the only concern probably is whether we've got enough water on top um, and it might go slick, but hopefully not. I hope it's nice and drivey for the guys. Um, it just makes better racing. So it's a very fine balancing act to, to get it right with, uh, like you say, the levels of water that you put on the track. Yeah, it is. It's, yeah, I don't know. I couldn't, I can't remember how I did it last week, let alone today. Um, uh, you just look at it and 
try and work it out and um, and hope for the best. So it's not really a technical thing by the numbers. It's it's that, that case of looking, learning, and understanding what you're seeing in front of you. Yeah, it, it probably is a moisture content that is ideal, but um, I just look at it and hope for the best. Uh, one day. Just before I retire, I might uh, get a moisture meter or something so the next person knows what to do. Uh, just keep on doing what you're doing, ladies and gentlemen. That is uh, Stan Hickey, track preparer here at Paradise Valley Speedway and, of course, for many years has been regarded as the best track surface in the country. And let's hope tonight it proves it once again as we get set for the 2021 New Zealand Superstock Championships. Minty, all yours. Yeah, we just uh, spend a bit of time over at the Joblins looking at their Doug Nash gearboxes and how they change their gear ratios in the gearbox into a solid diff and then you've got the quick change diff. Down here I've come down to Dale Stewart the 94R and found a Raptor gearbox. These were first brought into the country by the man you've just talked to Stan and Sonia Hickey brought the Raptor gearbox, they found it in Holland, they got it imported through America and they brought it into New Zealand. What they found though was the first gear was very weak so Stan actually started manufacturing bigger, fatter, wider first gears to stop them blowing when you did clutch launches because the Raptor gearbox isn't built for clutch launches, it's actually built for rolling starts. So here we go in New Zealand we'll do something different to a gearbox as you can see from this gearbox unlike the uh, one from Joblins you can't pull it apart here and try and fix it you blow that you put a new one and that's why they've got spares two speed slow speed and that's why you'll see a lot of clutch slipping going on when they take off from the start line if you overload first gear it goes bang you can still run in second gear but those bits of gears sometimes go into the other gears then you've got a gearbox hemorrhage and it comes out through the side and you've got a bill for about three and a half four grand so that's the Raptor the ZF gearbox looks looks pretty much the same other than the fact it's a four speed. Not too bad to change either, the crews can change a gearbox in about 20 minutes uh, given a pinch, about 20 minutes and of course at the back the drive shaft bolts straight into there and if you come to the front when you blow it up that's where you take it apart to get all the gears out. That is the Raptor gearbox and that's one that come from America. They use them in America but they tend not to use them for clutch starts. Here in New Zealand we chuck 500 horsepower through a triple plate clutch into a Raptor gearbox, out the back through a quick change diff, onto Hoosier cross ply tyres and hope like hell it all works and we go racing around a track and in the meantime with 26 cars we bash into each other. Don't we have a wonderful sport here in New Zealand? Hey, wherever you are, welcome along. I hope some of that tech stuff has helped you. Raptor gearbox, Doug Nash gearbox, ZF gearbox, solid diffs like the Joblins run, quick change diffs. That's how you get the power to the ground here at Rotorua International Speedway. How's that, Paul? Did that teach you anything? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm learning lots. And, and this is the thing, it's, it's really funny, Minty, because, uh, you know, while I've been around Speedway my whole life, uh, as a supporter, as you know, the, the son of a top racer and the father of kids that have raced mini stocks, technically, I've got no idea, man. I can change a tyre, um, and you know, around dad's car, racing the super stocks over the years, I'd just kind of maybe do the odd bit here and there and hear the guys talking about changing this and doing that, and I just stood there and nod my head. Everybody kind of thinks I, you know, know a lot about that kind of thing, and I certainly don't, but you've uh, helped us learn a lot across the course of this season, uh, across the course of this weekend at Paradise Valley Speedway. So the 2021 New Zealand Superstock Championships is getting closer. It looks as though the drivers are out of their driver's briefing. They're all wandering back. So we're going to take a very quick break and we will catch up with Barry Brown, find out uh, what was discussed at the driver's briefing, whether there's anything different from uh, what was discussed last night. So we'll take a quick break, bit of music and uh, some commercials from our sponsors who helped make it all happen. And we'll be back to continue our countdown uh, for the Ripper Charge at six o'clock, which is edging closer. Race time, 5.29. We are 30 minutes away from the loud pedal at the 2021 New Zealand Super Stock Championships. Yeah, look, as we go down here, a bit more tech stuff off. Come down here to the 58K. Now that's the car of the Roy Guards that had no end of grief last night with a little magnet on the bottom of the distributor. But if you zoom in on this motor, there's a problem with this motor. All the other motors that we looked at, if you come around here, there's something missing off the side. Most of them have four of those headers coming out. This one has got three, which means it's a Chev V6. It's a NASCAR motor. And this thing screams and howls and makes all sorts of noise and about the same horsepower as the V8s, around 400, 450 horsepower, but better torque down low. So this is one of two V6 motors. Dale Wallace, the 557C, has the other one. Roy Guard has this one here. They've got a proud history. It's also one of those uh, tri-rail type cars, 
but you, it's got a distinctive sound. When you hear it, go out of here. Dave Roygaard, who's the car owner, and of course, uh, X teams racer from everywhere. Dave, uh, why a V6? You love V8s. What's the go? Got something different, mate. Oh, you're always different. I can assure you of that. But uh, you've, it, you've driven it, and you can't catch it. I couldn't catch it when I was racing, so we thought we'd better own it. Well, that's a fair old thing. Last night, a night from hell with one little magnet the size of about the end of a big ballpoint pen made it miserable in three DNFs. Very disappointing. Um, he's had a great season, but yeah, that's championship racing, isn't it? I think it uh, started at the teams at Huntley, got a big hit, and I would say that's uh, been broken since then and we never picked it up. So, Dave, the setup here at Chev V6, the gearbox in behind is a Raptor or ZF? ZF. ZF, which is a four-speed box. It's like, is that the old CF Bedford type box? It is indeed, but this one's a little bit special. It's missing a couple of gears. So you've taken third and fourth out of it and put a higher ratio in second? Uh, third and fourth are in there, no second, and it hasn't got original gears that have all been made. And the diff's a quick change diff? Yep, quick change, standard deal. So how quick can you get the diff gears out of that car, put a new set in it, and why would you do that? Um, we've actually been doing it the last few meetings to keep off the rev limiter, you know, give you more speed at the end, go in, if you're going faster you come out faster don't you? So tell me about the rev limiter, because these motor builders say these motors are good for 11,000 RPM but you wouldn't want to run them there for long, what's your limiter sitting at? This is 87. So 8,700, I've talked to a whole lot of motor builders and they said oh 11, 5, 10, 5, 10, 3 and here's the Chev V6 and most of them are saying the same thing. About 8, 8, 8, 5, 8, 7, 9 grand, 9, 2 is about the rev limiter of most of these cars. Going to give another whirl tonight mate? Yeah, yeah, we just want to run it, obviously we're in the also rans but uh, run it, see if it's good really for Friday. Got to say another thing too, one other son not here and it's a shame he can't race, but isn't it great that he's been made the Super Rugby squad down there in the Hurricanes, even though it isn't Waikato, we'll let him off this once? Yeah, it's pretty exciting. So he's, He was a bit disappointed that he couldn't do the New Zealands, um, but yeah, that, that racing don't pay the bills, does it? The, the days and numbers, that's Cam Roygaard, he's a, a professional rugby player now, contracted to the Hurricanes down there in Wellington. Of course, the other son of Dave Roygaard, been around for a long time. Two identical cars, the other one, the 85, 88. 88, running a V8. They're pretty close and even. Hey, that's us from down in here. A bit of tech talk. We're going to take a break. We're going to go back up. But that is the only Daryl Wallace and the 58K. You listen to that sound tonight. It's distinctive, it's different, and it howls. It is a V6 Chev NASCAR built. And we hope that, Dave just said, we hopefully hear that sound. It's a cool hot rod. It is one cool car. We'll take a break. I don't know if we're going back to Paul Hickey, but uh, that's a bit of tech talk from down here in the pits with Minty. Hope that was some help to you all. Technical Welding Services Hamilton are specialists in the transit concrete mixer industry. From chassis drop-off to a full working concrete mixing, the team will take care of the job from start to finish. Full engineering services and general sheet metal work can also be undertaken. Need a quote? Call 07 847 2031. Or visit our website www.techweld.nz Technical Welding Services Hamilton, we are the experts. Night two of the world. No, I'm. Mean, <laughs> that's the wrong meeting. I'm so used to saying that. It is night two of the Technical Welding Services New Zealand Super Stock Championships, and we are set to go with race one of the night. It is the Reaper Charge. We have 24 finalists found, and we have two more to go. They are on the dummy grid. Minty, what's the feeling like down there? Yeah, look, it's pretty exciting, but uh, just a quick bit of tech stuff. Last night, track temperature 19 to 21 degrees around the track. Right now, it is 28 to 33 degrees. A very hot track down in corner one and two, a little bit cooler than it is in three and four. It's stinking hot out here, and here they come out the gate. And let's take a look at them as they make their way up. Paul Vasey and Ryan Hunt. So this is your inside row. As they make their way out onto the track right now, look at this, Paul Vasey, Ryan Hunt, then we go to the 3NZ of Scott Joblin, 87, Thomas Stanaway, the 9G of Jamie Hamilton, 
uh, you know, straight away there. Hayden Hart, you know, these are all guys that have achieved uh, stuff over. Hayden Hart on the podium with the North Island Champs yes. a few weeks ago. You know, it's we've talked about this being a championship quality field in its own right. It is certainly, uh, the, the, you know, no offence to some down the bottom half. The, the top half of this field is absolutely amazing. And there's a few other real, real top runners like Jared Wade back on grid 25. So, uh, former New Zealand champion. So straight off the bat, there's an extra minute or so of racing or 45 seconds of racing for us tonight. Last night, all of our races, 12 laps. Tonight, we up the ante for the three finals races and this repercharge. These are 15 lappers. You know, what kind of... I don't think you can go into a race like this with a game plan, can you? Repercharge, I don't, I don't think you can. Like the, the repercharge of Palmerston North, Peter Rees coming from grid 22 to take the lead on the last corner. You know, it's... You just don't know what people are going to do. Some some clubs will have uh, ideas out there. Some of the guys will drop back a little bit. They're not allowed to stop and wait, but they will help block for their club mates that are at the front. It's um, you, you just don't know what's going to happen until that chicken flag falls. The top two aren't guaranteed. How often have we seen someone from the Ripper Charge podium at any sort of title? World Two Forties, North Islands, Grand Prix, New Zealands. It just seems a habit. Peter Bengston springs to mind, and there's many, many more. Rees last year fourth in the NZs from Ripper Charge. They're just there or thereabouts. You win the Ripper Charge. You've had one race meeting or one race on this track. I think that gives you a little bit of a hand when you get going a bit faster. It does, Minty. It gets them out there, it settles their nerves, I think. Plus, they get a look at the racetrack already. They know what to adjust on their setup for heat one if they make it through to the, to the uh, top two. The other 24 guys, they're only just sitting there watching at this stage and, uh, and guessing what the track's going to do. Inside temperature out here in the sun, it is 31 and a half degrees here in the middle of the track, just in the air temperature. Like I said, the track is running uh, late 20s, early 30s, tight temperatures on most of the cars. We're sitting at around about 35 to 40 degrees. So uh, a lot of work to do in that. And the ambient temperature in three or four of the cars I went to is about what we are now, is about 34 or 35 degrees. I will be expecting that to be up in the 60s at the end of this uh, Grand Prix, at the end of this Ripper Charge. So uh, there's going to be some hot bodies and their pulse rate goes from around 65 to 170 to 180. And, and to that. see you hiding in the shade behind the yep. big track to where they're meant to get hot out there. Mate, it's hot out here. I don't know how they're going to cope with this heat. But look at this. We're going to go racing and we're over up to you guys. It is the Repercharge race. Two spots up for grabs in the finals and we are go. 12 laps. And look for a big push. Mike Ranger just a little bit slow. There will be a big push here into the corner. Gaskin out to the wall. Codge has gone out. Ranger gets a couple of big shots. Stan away. Deer's gone around. We've got uh, Joblin and Stanaway off to the pits. Rumney's gone backwards. The dust is flying. Hayden Hart into the concrete wall. Paul Vasey spun himself up down in turn number four. Comes across in front of Jared Wade. So out front it is Ryan Hunt and Jamie Hamilton. The three NZ, he's got some major issues. Richard Gaskin's still around. We've got smoke pouring out of the Joblin car. The two NZ, lots of smoke from that car. So right now it's Ryan Hunt at the 29. Followed by Jamie Hamilton. Jared Wade, seven from grid 25. Yeah, Hamilton has just gone to the front now, so it's 9 29, then 95, and still a lot of smoke coming from the two inches. Joplin's torched a dip or gearbox on the set off. I think it's a dip he's torched. So still lots of smoke from the two. The dust is uh, plenty of that, so that's settling a wee bit now. David Ellsworth pulls out onto the infield. So our race leader is in turn number four. It is 9, 29, 95 and two. So two is tracking real fast at the moment. Adam Joblin, but a lot of smoke coming from that car. Now he tries to dive up the inside of Alex Hill. So remember the number eight, he is a lap down. Mike Ranger a lap down, so it is 9 and 29 who are in the optimum positions right now in this Reaper Charge race. Two spots, remember. First and second will move in to the finals. Here we go, oh, Stewart puts the block on. <laughs> but Hamilton just punches him out. Oh, and is he going to overcook it here? No, he's managed to pull the car back. So the nine car from Rotorua did put the block on Jamie Hamilton momentarily. Van Lee shouts gone around in the 49, so it's still 9 and 29. Thomas Stanaway 
Is he blocking? As uh, Deer goes around the outside. Thomas Stanaway cruising the pole line. Here comes Hamilton. Is he going to dare to go around the outside? Here we go. Stanaway. Is he after him? No, he's not. Yes, he is. He's just clicked. Who's gone around the outside of him? Stewart is still looking as well. Here we go. Hamilton, your race leader. Stewart, he hits the gas in the 9R car. Or is he after Jordan Deere? We've gone red. Lights are red. Oh, and Jamie Hamilton, big punch into the back of Brent Stewart. Way after the red. Yeah, a couple of cars slow down there, but smelling that uh, oil burning from the job, and it's not coming from the motor, it's coming from a gearbox or a diff. It's got that wonderful mineral smell about it. You'll see the smoke pouring out of the back. It's not motor, it's gearbox or diff that's gone a little bit queer in that car. Still running at the moment, but uh, yeah, I don't know what Stuart's just lurking with intent round there. Uh, is well, Hamilton going to be under a 10? He'll probably going to have to be pushed back a little bit to get behind Stewart, well, well, which is what he wants. He needs to be pushed back a long way because he came in and gave Stewart a big punt well after the Reds. Then leash out off to the infield in the uh, 49H. So we're just looking at... See, here's the red flag out now on the uh, replay. And, well, we don't... We haven't got the angle on the shot. So... If you've seen Joblins have a lot of luck, Breve will see it here didn't we happen go. in the first lap. The, the lights are well read by here and comes in and gives them gives the punch. Of course, reminder that, that all the drivers have, it's a one-way communication radio now where the referees can talk to the drivers. And uh, generally what they do now is they give them a call, going red, one, two, three. Yes. So the drivers have got the ability to know that the red lights are coming on. So we see there, look how far back Jamie Hamilton's been pushed. So he is the race leader. 9G, we, he has just completed eight laps. So he's on to lap nine, so there's six to go, so we're just over halfway. Then we go back, right where the, chicken, where the uh, red flag is, the start finish line. 29, 95 to uh, 28 are battling for second place. So at the moment, Hamilton is clear. I suppose the one advantage for Brent Stewart getting that hit from Jamie Hamilton and Hamilton passing him. He knows that that's definitely <laughs> Jamie Hamilton right behind him. Yes. Hello! <laughs> uh, knock, knock. Yep. Coming through. Uh, so, what's the 87 going to do now with Thomas Stanaway? So we see him lurking. Mike Granger, flat left front tyre on the 8R. Flat tyre for Hayden Hart and the 166. Flat tyre for the Joblin and the 3NZ. All right. Wait for the red lights go out. Wait for the greens. Let's go. So 9R, Brent Stewart, he'll try and get himself up into the corner so that Hamilton can't come in and hit him at full speed. So keep an eye on this. Hamilton, he's just eased off it, hasn't he? Now he's going to come in, gives him a shot. So this is the, at the front here. Oh, oh, and he just missed him. Stewart on Hamilton. Hamilton seems to be struggling a wee. And now he's going to come up behind Michael Rumney. Turn four and three. Hamilton gets smoked by Brent Stewart. Hamilton had a problem with that car, it went off song. And now, oh, Thomas Stanaway just takes out Joblin. So the 87 took out, so now at the front it is 29 and 95, and lights are red. Jared Wade just took Joblin out for a second time, going into turn one. So Bryce Steiner Spare and Jared me. Wade on Joblin. Joblin's car looks like it might be on fire down there in the uh, corner one smoking something terrible with the hot stuff on the exhaust it's getting worse so the race leaders Ryan Hunt uh, is it yep Ryan Hunt in 29 and the very similar colors the 95 of Alex Hill uh, currently sitting in first and second place then we go to the Wanganui car of Elias Dykstra 28 and then back to Mark Costello in the 98 so they're down the main straight that car of Hamilton's went off song up the main straight as he came out and passed Stewart. Stewart had the big dive at him. And then the car had a little puff of smoke come out from the right-hand side and it seemed to slow up. And then uh, Stewart was in there taking them both off. But Stewart's definitely taken out the 9C and stopped his chances of going through as the only South uh, only Christchurch car, should I say. All right, and the two NZ has pulled off as well. Joblin is, has retired. So there we yeah, go, both Joblins gearbox. are out. And Jamie Stewart Hamilton Stewart comes Hamilton. in. <laughs> look at these yeah. two on the infield, just looking at each other and laughing. Well, no, like Stewart had parked up, and Hamilton came over and gave him a nudge. So he gave him a nudge back. Yeah. Yeah. Who's the Who's the best number nine? 
Stewart by far. Well, one's got more <laughs> well, tyres than the other. There's my ahead on it. <laughs> <laughs> one's got two flat fronts. And the Argar won that battle. Uh, but, uh, but hey, look, and, and we've said it many times already, Jamie Hamilton, probably the unluckiest driver yes, last night. Last night, uh, yes. But that, that, what, tonight, that's stock car racing. That's the way it that is. goes. Uh, but last night, he was just unlucky with that uh, with that tyre. Right. Five laps to go. So there's still plenty. And Mark Costello gets a good start in the 98. So he's the one who knows this track best out of all of these drivers. So 29, 95, then the 28 and 98. So both these drivers just a little unsure of which way to attack Thomas Danaway. Stanaway runs it a little bit wide. Now Michael Rumney in the number seven car. Who's he going to be working for? And who's he after? Oh, and the, oh. oh Stanaway <laughs> just gets caught up. Stan, uh, Rumney turns around Hill. So Dykstra into second place. And Mark Costello right there or thereabouts as well. The 98M. Here comes Bryce Steiner now. The 118 is getting into the game. So 29 and 28 with the white flag. One to go, round goes Dykstra. So now it's Costello and Steiner for second place, 98 and 118. Into the last turn, can Costello hold on? Here comes Steiner in with the bumper. Can he get back on pace? No, he can't. Ryan Hunt will cross in first. Mark Costello in second. It's a Bay Park one too. Bryce Steiner, so close. How many different leaders did we have there throughout the course of that race? Wow. Well, I'll tell you, one guy that'll be quite happy about that, and that'll be Kerry Remnant. Yes. Uh, so let's just look at where they've come from uh, <laughs> down the list here. Um, so Ryan Hunt, he was up on grid three. Yes. Mark Costello has come from grid 14. Yeah, man, there's, uh, yeah, first and second just changed so many times. So Bay Park now with three cars in the final with a, a one-two there in the rapid charge, you'd have thought. And look at this water getting dumped on the track straight away. Big dump of water because it is still so, so hot out there. And that race at six o'clock in this hot sun has taken an immediate toll on the track, Mindy. Yeah, it has. Look, the 85S coming off the Eulenburg car, his cabin temperature was 77 degrees. Wow. 77 degrees inside. It was stinking hot. You could feel the heat out. The tyre temperature, 83 on the right rear. I checked Jordan's car, Dare's car. He was 68 inside the cabin, and the tyre temperature was 76 on the right rear. Man, there's some drive, but stink, there's some heat in this stuff. And so we're going to see Stan Hickey uh, go to work on the track here, and uh, he's firing some instructions to the team on the infield as he will get set to dump more water out on there. Well, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. So we see some of the that first corner. So many big names out of the running in that first corner. Jordan Deere got turned up. Uh, we had Stanaway and Joblin all over each other. Here's that hit on Jamie Hamilton. Oh, we might just need to look at that again. We saw them get pulled off. But there is uh, your confirmed, well, your provisional results. Ryan Hunt and Mark Costello, first and second. Steiner, Wade and Hodge wrap up the top five. Uh, but boy, two more mount cars uh, into the finals. And an impressive drive from both of them. Oh, it certainly was. Mark Costello come from a long way back. Ryan Hunt, just a controlled race to stay in that... Uh, Top three or four the whole way. Um, look at the change in the Joplin's fortunes. Two NZ and three NZ didn't even qualify last year. Simon, that uh, running the number 72, the only Joplin car that can get a number this year. So, but those three, they're just so equal, aren't they? And uh, it's no surprise to share it around. You've got to qualify to uh, to get the number at the end of the second night. And qualifying's been a nightmare here for some of those guys. Hi, Malcolm Nardo from Suck It Up. We specialise in hydro excavation in the Canterbury region. Safe big methods around services. Also we do septic tank cleaning, drain cleaning, CCTV over your pipes. 
If you want an excellent service, please check us out on Facebook. Suck It Up Limited, 740 Marston Road, Christchurch. Call them 24 hours a day on 027 588 8809. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as we continue our countdown, we are, where are we now? 40 minutes away from the st- uh, start of the racing proper. But between now and seven, we do have some very special uh, things that will happen for you. Our official infield pre-race countdown show will begin in around about uh, seven minutes time. We'll be able to take in some more pictures from the pits and uh, maybe uh, grab a couple of interviews. But then from 6.25, all our attention turns to the infield for the official pre-race show. Now, the most important thing happens in seven minutes. Yes. Minty, rest. <laughs> Minty, rest. <laughs> uh, so we are going to take a quick break. Hey, joining me down in the pits is uh, the winner of that Reaper Charge uh, race, Ryan Hunt. Ryan, what a race. Oh, yeah, it was, um, it was good, yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was hot and that track was tricky and um, it's just basically trying to keep it square and, and clean and... Yeah, and I was lucky that I had a few boys out there, obviously, sort of, sort of helping me out, and that was nice. And um, yeah, we just sort of kept clean and sort of got the job done. Now the sun's been on the track for quite some time today. How quick was it? Oh, it was only, it was only probably a matter of maybe three or four laps, and it just disappeared. Yeah, um, yeah and it was, it, was, it was tricky, and I was lucky that I wasn't sort of racing in a, in a group there because that would have been even more difficult. We could sort of, sort of race our sort of our own sort of race, I guess, or, or our own lines without sort of getting sort of too tied up. But yeah, now nah, that track was, I'd say that's probably not what we're going to get tonight. But um, yeah, no, nah, it was definitely challenging. So there was a little bit of carnage on the track, and you managed just to drive all around it. Yeah, no, I was, um, I was happy. Yeah, no, when I saw that happen, and I sort of sneaked through, and and people tying up other guys. That, yeah, no, that was, it's a, it's a big relief. Well, not a big relief, but it's a, it's a, a, a relief that that person's not trying to get me. And um, yeah, yeah, and just sort of, yeah, sort of, done it. Got the job done. <laughs> You've done it in great style. So when we uh, came out here, you had a drink of water. How are you feeling? You, you puffed. You're right. Um, I'm not too bad. It's just obviously a little bit hot, but um, yeah, now I'm, I'm sort of yeah feeling pretty good. Eh? So now we have the Grand Parade. I think you guys come out in race six. So what are you going to do between the end of the parade and your first race? Um, obviously, we'll just have a quick look over the car and probably watch the first few few heats um, and sort of see what that track's going to do. But I think we'll just leave the car how it was last night. It's going to be probably pretty similar, and um, we'll just try put our buddy Panayas back and go for it and see see how we go on the first one. So Kerry Remnant was obviously the only Bay Park to make our car to make it through last night. we now got three, so that's given you uh, a bit of a higher odds to take it over to uh, the Bay. Yeah, no, it'd be nice if, um, you know, either one of us can get up there or on, on the podium. Obviously Kerry's been around for a long time and he's probably well overdue compared to, to me and um, Costello. But um, yeah, hey, we'll see what's happening. We'll definitely we'll be sort of looking out for each other and helping each other out, yeah, for sure. Awesome. So while we've got some time, do you want to give a big plug to your, to your uh, sponsors? Yeah, yeah. Um, first up, Growing King, Garth at Growing King. He helps me out a fair bit. Um, full Moss Grip Fencing, Phil, he does. He, he throws a lot of money at the car too. Um, we've got a few other little partners on board, like Regal Remotive, Mungatapa Motors, um, Alpha Waterproofing Limited, um, and there's a couple others there, but yeah, there's a good, good ones that help me out. And uh, obviously you can't do this week in, week, week out with them, without them, so give a big thanks to them. Uh, are you expecting to make any changes to the car before your race? Um, we, yeah, I'm not too sure yet. We'll sort of like to say, see how that track goes. If anything, we might just tighten it up a little bit. Um, we'll have a look at the, at the rubber on it as well and see what that's like. But yeah, we sort of started pretty fresh and I think, yeah, I think the track will sort of probably come to us more than, than trying to judge it off that track anyway. Yeah, so listen, Ryan, you've got a whole heap of people here who want to shake your hands, so we'll leave you to it. Really appreciate the time that you've taken to speak to us, especially after that hard race. Well done and congratulations. Cool, thank you. Awesome, thank you. Hey, so I'm down in the pits. Here's Harley Rob, the 991 driver from Christchurch. Unfortunately, uh, Harley, you're a bit of a spectator tonight. Yeah, we uh, sustained a bit of damage last night after... Um, targeting a couple of cars and unfortunately ran out of time to fix it today so just decided to leave it parked up and we'll just help a few of our mates tonight. Awesome, so um, you might be the man to talk to about some rules. So yesterday we had issues um, with the balaclava and nylon and shoes. So can you explain for everyone at home 
how clear the rules are on those two things? Yeah, the rules are pretty clear. You know, you've got to read the um, Speedway New Zealand rule book and uh, make sure all your gear's compliant. And obviously, um, I don't know what happened last night, but by the sounds of it, a couple of people must have uh, been uncompliant and uh, obviously got disqualified or something. So, yeah, just read the rules and make sure you've got the right gear, I guess. It's a bit of hard luck, but like you say, the rules are the rules, and that's just what it is. Yeah, the rules are the rules, and if you don't stick by the rules, obviously you, you get the consequence, so... Yeah, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a tough one, um, but I tell you what, you're up here, like say, you're just going to watch, enjoy. Where are you sitting tonight? Uh, yeah, we're just up here watching. We're lucky enough, Scotty Myers has offered up his corporate box well up the top, so we've got a real good spot to watch tonight, so even a couple of cold beverages, so <laughs> we'll be looking forward to that. Awesome. Well, I tell you what, I'll let you get back to it. I can see that you're making way down to the uh, into the bits to say your highs. Uh, we might see you at the World 240s. Yeah, no, we'll be back with the 240s and mix it up again, hopefully, so it'll be good. Awesome. Well, thanks for taking the time. We'll let you get back to it. Thanks. Awesome. Cheers. Hi, I'm Brittany Carpenter, driver of 85 GM, based out of Greymouth. I use wholesale tyres, coloured chrome rims on my car. If you're looking for something unique and different on your car, contact Wholesale Tyres to get these coloured rims or get a hold of them on Facebook at Wholesale Tyres or go onto their website which is www.wholesaletires.net.nz See you trackside. Need colour chrome rims? Wholesale Tyres. Good rims, better prices, great people. And we are getting closer and closer to some of the official parts of the evening that we've got for you here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> boys and girls. What a night! I want to hear you roar. How much noise can you make, Paradise Valley Speedway? Let's try that again. How much noise can you make? That's better. We want to hear lots of that this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls race fans, welcome to night two of the 2021 New Zealand Super Stock Championships presented to you by Technical Welding Services and the Rotorua Stock Car Club. This is your official event pre-show. This event has a storied history, 55 years, 47 champions from Gray and Stretch in 1966 to Randy T in 2020. Tonight we add another name to that list, or do we, with a number of previous winners in our finals field. To begin our pre-show this evening, ladies and gentlemen, at TWS Paradise Valley Speedway, we want to acknowledge the drivers whose names are forever written in our sports history books. We have a number of our previous champions here with us this weekend. There were more who were set to join us, but have sadly had to head home uh, because of our rain delays. But tonight, we still have many of our former, previous New Zealand Superstock champions here tonight at TWS Paradise Valley Speedway for another victory lap. Please welcome to the track your previous winners of the New Zealand Superstock Championships. Another victory lap on the back of the truck. We will introduce to you Shane Penn, Gary Parks, Bryce Penn, Lyle Rumney, Kyle Fraser, Russell Joblin, Joe Farham, Calvin Gray, Malcolm Nartai, Paul Wade, Peter Rees, Wayne Hemi, Jason Long, William Humphreys, Simon Joblin, Randall Tarrant, Lindsay Willis, Tub Warner, Mike Weems, and Adrian Kay. Show your appreciation, ladies and gentlemen, on another victory lap for your past and present New Zealand Super Stock Champions. And great to see you out there, Paul. A couple of uh, father and son teams. Obviously, Bryce Penn, Shane Penn, Russell Joplin, Simon Joplin, and uh, one of only two three-time champions that we have with Kevin Free, who uh, won his first in 1970, the second 23 years later, 1993. He was the youngest at the time when he won his first one, the oldest champion at the time when he won his last one. So all sorts of records that uh, Kevin Free set. Over all the years, Barry, you and I have been to many great New Zealand Superstock Championship we events. Have. And every one of these guys has a story to tell about what went on on their night when they claimed the biggest title of them all. Well, actually, I mean, just hearing you read out the names, you actually think of the different things, you know. Kyle Fraser and that amazing runner for Wanganui with Wayne Hemi. Just, he just wanted it more than what Hemi did. That's what Wayne said, got out of the car. 
he wanted it more, you know, he was just brutal that night. But yeah, the stories behind absolutely every, every one. You mentioned, you mentioned Wayne Hemi there. And turn the page to that different story in the, in the history of Wayne Hemi when he won the New Zealand Championship in Gisborne uh, in 2002. And another one of the men standing on the truck, they're not far away from him, uh, instrumental in helping him to that championship. And Calvin, Calvin Gray, Gray, who then yes. went on to win it himself a yes. few years later. Yeah, that, that was brutal, wasn't it? And uh, Gary Parks, one of our back-to-back -back winners. Shane Penn, another back-to-back -back winner. We've only had four of those. So, um, yeah, some great champions. But great to see some of the names from the real early days of the championship as well, Paul. And great to see some of our former Rotorua champions there as well. Uh, Adrian Kay is there. He won the New Zealand Championship when it was held here in Rotorua in yes. 1974. And then Lindsay Willis, another one of our Rotorua champions, who won it three years later uh, at that rain-affected meeting in Gisborne. And, and the thing is, too, there's quite a number of these guys on this truck that are competing tonight. So you could be looking at your new New Zealand champion while we're uh, paying homage to all these past champions. So as they complete their victory lap, ladies and gentlemen, 21 of your previous New Zealand Superstock champions, raise the roof, show your appreciation of those drivers who has achieved the greatest feats in Superstock racing in Aotearoa. And I think we should make a special mention to Paul of uh, Graham Mitchell who passed just a few days ago and was intending to be here and on this trailer right now and uh, I believe the family still come down so welcome to all of them to Paradise Valley. Well it's, you know it's, it's amazing like we've, we haven't had the chance to stand up close to the truck Barry they've, they've done that victory lap with these champions but you look up there and that's, that's just it's just awesome to see isn't it? Most of them have still got fairly good balance you notice the older guys sitting down the younger champions managing to stand up and very coolly holding their balance without hanging on to anything, <laughs> other than the bottle of water, which uh, we need right about now. All right, let's turn our attention now to the race cars. These 26 drivers will do battle tonight, three 15 lap heats to find your 2021 New Zealand Superstock champion. Let's take a look at them as they make their way around uh, this Paradise Valley circuit, leading them out, and deservedly so, the defending champ, 1NZ, Randall Tarrant. Oh, that, that car just looks absolutely amazing, Paul, and what a job they've done putting that paint job on this car just for this meeting. And uh, seeing there, black for New Zealand, gold for the winner, I take it, and uh, he just wanted some bling on it, and he got it. 126 in behind him, Asher Rees, who will start on grid 13, that's the way, show your appreciation. There we go, to Peter Rees. So he's jumped off the truck and jumped on his race car. Uh, so the 10G uh, of Peter Rees, followed by the 5G of Josh Prentice, and then rounding out uh, the Rees race team, essentially the 127 of Ethan Rees. Yeah, and uh, yeah, all those cars top qualifying their group last night. Uh, the, the three Rees cars, Asher, Pete and Ethan. So, and uh, Quinn Ryan, topping his group as well. He looked extra strong last night in the 46B. Yes, a lot sir. of the top chances right up the front. Then it's Mitch Vickery in the 26K. And in behind him is Jack Myers in the 88P car. And another one of his Palmy club mates, the 591. Another one who's just been on the truck, the Master Blaster from Reed Walker Motorsport, Wayne Hemi. Yeah, 66R after that, Steve Hampton. On his return to racing, got 66 points and uh, absolutely thrilled to be in the final 26. William Humphreys, another former 1NZ, 2NZ in the past, the 58s of Peter Benston, then Simon Joplin, the ZC. Look, these former champions, hey, Simon Joplin in the 72. Uh, the only one in the finals field this weekend from that Joplin Motorsport team. And he is in, in the only competitor that can equal Craig Boot and Kevin Free with three wins. Ryan Hunt from the Ripper Charge tonight. Then Kerry Remnant topped this group last night. A lot of people excited to see Kerry in this finals field. Damien Orr, the local star in the 81, and Des Curry out of Huntley in 106. Yeah, followed up by the 71P, and yeah, once again, that, that was another one of the cars. He was fast and seemed to keep out of trouble, didn't he? Yeah, he certainly did. Shane Malsop, 82, and behind him, the Hamish Booker uh, car from Stratford. He'll start heat one off grid 12. Mark Costello. Another one of those drivers from the Ripper Charge tonight. And Brett Nichols, good to see the South Highlander in the finals field in the 48. Yeah, and I certainly wish him a bit, bit more luck than what he normally has when he comes here to Rotorua. Deserves it travelling all the way from Nelson. To Jason Long, another former champ, the 41B car. 
Then to the 54S of Paul Johnson and 5W, Keegan Levine, the defending World 240s champion this year. And 72A from Auckland, Cody McKee, one of the uh, one of the surprises, but one of the, the real feel-good stories from last night. And at the back there, 89W, Dale Robertson, who's been almost indiscreet this weekend. Even a driver's briefing doesn't say a word. So Keegan Levine, 5W, Cody McKee, 72, and the 89 of Dale Robertson round out your finals field. So look at this, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. At TWS Paradise Valley Speedway. What a lineup. On the back of the truck, our former champions lined up along the infield, your finalists, the 26 drivers who will compete tonight for the Technical Welding Services New Zealand Superstock Championships. And on the front straight, the 1NZ. It was 12 months and three days ago when 26-year-old Randall Tarrant claimed victory in the big one at Whanganui's Ocean View Speedway to become 2020 New Zealand Superstock Champion. Tonight he still has the chance to keep the number one on his car. And tonight we pay tribute to our defending champion. At Speedway, across New Zealand every week, we see these warriors and their 1,500 kilo machines do battle. But tonight, we welcome warriors of a different sort to Paradise Valley. With Rotorua as the cultural capital of Aotearoa and the spiritual home of Māori, it is fitting to be joined by warriors from Tamaki Māori Village. We welcome them to Paradise Valley Speedway as they get set to perform a traditional formation known as Kurutau. It's a popular formation used in the history of the Māori people to bring taonga or treasure onto the marae. Now, please put your hands together and welcome our warriors from Tamaki Māori Village to TWS Paradise Valley Speedway. And now, Randall Tarrant will bring the New Zealand Superstock Championship trophy onto the stage. The trophy is positioned on the presentation plinth. And we welcome Zoe Irons. Randall? Randall? We welcome Zoe Irons, General Manager of Speedway New Zealand, who is also here with us tonight. She's acknowledging the accomplishments of our defending champion, his commitment, and the role he has played as an ambassador for the sport over the past 12 months. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you, Randy T. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as we continue to count down to tonight's finals, I'd like to ask you all to stand for the national anthem of New Zealand. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we have acknowledged our champion's past and tonight's performance of this anthem has added significance. 
In 2006, Rotorua superstock star Darcy Hunter won the New Zealand Championship. Darcy sadly passed away a couple of years ago. Tonight's anthem will be performed by Darcy's daughter, Tiana Hunter, and his nephew, Hunter Grace. Ei roa atua o na i wi mataura a ta fa karo o na me aroha no. gentlemen, Tiana Hunter and Hunter Grace. Ladies and gentlemen, your finalists for the 2021 New Zealand Superstock Championships and our champions past. That is your official pre-show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, are you ready? I said, are you ready? Yes. Man, we it was are, moving. It was. We are set to do it as we pay tribute tonight to, to those New Zealand Superstock champions who haven't been able to join us here tonight. Uh, those who have sadly passed in recent days, recent years. Those who have contributed greatly to our sport. Our thoughts are with them and their families on a very special night like tonight when we acknowledge these warriors who go to battle on the racetrack. And thank goodness, Paul, after six days of waiting, we've actually finally managed to get this thing. So ladies and gentlemen, once again, a big round of applause for these uh, drivers and warriors on track. We are set to get the cars fired up. We are set to commence night two of the New Zealand Superstock Championships. Three big battles ahead, Barry. Oh, it certainly is. I, I mean, yeah, there's gonna be some personal stuff out there. There's gonna be some team stuff. It's just extremely difficult to pick which way it's going to go at the moment, Paul. Yeah, it is. There is uh, plenty to unfold. Yes. <laughs> I think so. While. So much will depend on heat one and uh, how some of these drivers go or don't go. Oh, and, uh, right. oh, I just We see some of the drivers there. They're throwing their tennis balls out still. Uh, if, keep an eye on those tennis balls. They'll have a number on those tennis balls. And if your car number on the tennis ball wins our championship tonight, do come and see us at Race Control at the end of the meeting tonight. And uh, we have got for you a sensational New Zealand Superstock Championship prize package, including a whole lot of that merchandise to take home as a bonus from this weekend. Hi, welcome to Expect Cars, Southland's multi-award winning pre-owned dealership. Stock us of classic collectibles, V8s, family vehicles, trade vehicles and everything in between. Thinking American or Aussie muscle, family vehicle or custom, think 
expert cars. Hey, yeah, uh, so I'm here with Keegan Levine. He's pretty relaxed down here at the minute. Keegan, congratulations on qualifying. You and Dale Robinson going through from Wellington. Yeah, no, it was um, a pretty tough night with uh, a flat uh, left front tyre from um, Turn 1, Race 1. So we battled with a mid-grid that we should have been further ahead, but no. Nah. Did it the hard way through a runoff, but we're here, so restart. Now, uh, you've just come off the infield. I don't know about you, but I got the chills. Rotor knows how to put on a show. Uh, yeah, Stan and Sonia and all the crew know how to um, make make it pretty cool. So, yeah, haven't done something like that before, and, yeah, pretty cool. Hey, now, tell you what, let's just run off where you stand. You're the current 240 champ. You're the current uh, competitor of the year across all all classes and current competitor of the year in the super stock so you're a bit of a mean machine are we uh, going to see this cup come home <laughs> hey you know just need a bit of luck I mean you know all those 20 25 other drivers could win it so you know you know you need you need some friends and a bit of luck and um, you know it's anyone's game so yeah it just adds a little bit more pressure probably so uh, so tell me who, who are your friends who have you been chatting with What's that, sorry? Who are your friends? Who you've been chatting with? Uh, I've only got one friend here, the other Wellington car, and that's all, you know, that's all you need to know, so. I tell you what, me and the rest of the people watching don't actually believe you, Keegan. <laughs> oh, well, you might find out later, but nah. <laughs> I tell you what, um, you've got to give a plug to your sponsors. You can do this and be here without them, so who would you like to give a shout-out to? Yeah, I mean, I've got about 15 sponsors, so I don't want to be here all day, but, you know, they know who they are, and obviously my olds, you know, all the effort and time they put in, and my partner and all the family, so nah, you know, it's a team sport, and... Um, couldn't do it without them. I tell you what, your dad Alan's over here working on the car, he must be super proud, yeah? No, yeah, he's always working on the car, he's always finding something to do, even if there's nothing to do, he's finding something to do, so he's making sure that the car's, you know, 110%. I tell you what, everybody knows I'm from Wellington, let's do this, eh? Yep. Awesome. Well done, congratulations and go hard. Cheers. Awesome. Thanks, Keegan. Yeah, he is, uh, he's one of the top contenders tonight, Keegan Levine. And, and he, you know, he's the defending World 240s champion. He's the current Grand Prix champion. Yes. So he had two major championship wins last year. We've got that, that final uh, track break down now too. Boy, okay, which, yes. um, I, I mean, not every year, but a lot of years these things in, inter erupt into giant team races by the time you get to, to heat three with uh, a few alliances and allegiances and uh, friends and family and the like. So looking through the tracks around New Zealand, we have Auckland with one finalist. Huntley with one finalist, Rotorua with two. Bay Park, by getting two through the Ripper Charge, now up to three. Kiki two, Hawke's Bay three, Gisborne three, Stratford two, Wanganui didn't get any through to the finals, Palmerston North six, Wellington two, Nelson one, and none from Christchurch. So, uh, yeah, a lot more tracks were presented, I think, in the final 26 than we normally get, Paul. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of tracks in there, sort of with two or three runners each. And uh, yeah, what do we got? Uh, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven tracks represented, and uh, we've only got I think 13 running super stocks. So yeah, certainly an awesome spread of competitors. Yeah, it certainly is. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. All your official info. You're up to date. The Technical Welding Services 2021 New Zealand Superstock Championships. Well, once again, we welcome you along uh, wherever you've travelled from, from around New Zealand, or wherever you're watching through the Pits TV. Well, night two is uh, officially underway. Of course, the Reaper Charge an hour ago, but now we get into the race meeting proper. And I want to take this opportunity to remind you no live streaming from the venue tonight. Uh, no using Facebook Live to show your friends what's going on. Uh, exclusive streaming rights uh, with the Rotorua Stock Car Club and uh, the Pits TV. So that is a condition of entry tonight. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, social media stars, please refrain from live streaming from Paradise Valley Speedway tonight. Race number two on our program, and this is the tier three competition. 12 laps, three heats uh, for this group. And again, like with the Reaper Charge, with so many late changes and withdrawals and people deciding not to make their way uh, in, there's been a few changes here as well. So I can tell you that uh, obviously we've got 26 in the New Zealand Championship uh, field. We've got 26 in the PTS group tier two. We've got 26 in tier three. 
Uh, and in our final group, we'll see 11 cars out amongst that lot, uh, getting a bit of a run tonight. So, tier three competition pole position for this opening heat will be Eddie Dodson. Set on pole. Outside of the front row, the 38P of Zane Dykstra. Onto row two, Matt Nielsen on the inside, Tom Cooper on the outside. But that just shows you how fickle the sport could be, eh? Matt Nielsen, what was that, four weeks ago, five weeks ago in Auckland, wins the North Island Championship. And tonight at the New Zealand Champs, he's racing down in tier three. Yes, well, uh, you know, he, he was looking likely going into heat three as well, well yeah. to qualify. And uh, boy, it only takes one bad race. and. Yeah, you're down in tier two or tier three, so uh, that's how how closely fought the groups were. 22 cars in each heat, but uh, after we'd lost a few with uh, three consecutive nights of rain, but yeah, still 22. You had to finish top four to go through. So the slow lap for these guys. Paulie got a real quick one. Yeah, yeah, we've got with that uh, getting a bit of moisture off the top of that track, Minty. So what's happening in pit side, mate? Cody McKee, uh, we're in a final. Hey, Cody Mack, uh, are you a little, a little bit excited? Oh, more than excited, mate. Just happy to be here, happy to qualify. It was a tough ask for anyone to do it. Yeah, bring it on. So really, let's be honest, this is your first full season of Superstocks? Yeah, first full season and we're exceeding all expectations. But hey, it's all a learning, eh? Last night you just stayed out of trouble. You kept the car clean and really people just left you alone. Is it a bonus being somebody who, who wasn't known last night, but suddenly you're in the finals, um, holy smoke, I'm alone? Yeah, it's a bit like that. I think we won't get um, fly as under the radar as we did last night. We popped a tie in the first one, so I think that helped us fly under, but there won't be any of that tonight. Any choice, uh, you know, change the body colour overnight or something like that, change the look of the car just to confuse them? Oh, we might see what we do in Heat 3 if we're up there, but hey, it's all games, eh? Cody, where's your, where's your history? Mini stocks? Yeah, raced in mini stocks, uh, did the full four years, a couple years in the stock car on and off, and then thanks to Northwestern Equipment, we're able to do the super stock. Well, good luck out there tonight. Uh, dummy grid, does your mouth get dry, your guts rolls a little bit and all that stuff? Nah, mate, I can't stop my leg from shaking. I'm so excited. Just put it on the gas pedal and go? Yeah, boy, you know it. There he is, 72A, Cody McKee. He's down here, he's excited, mate. He's just ready to go. A young fella, first full year of Superstock, and he's made that big 26. What a cool young kid. Oh, look, he's got every every reason to be excited. And, you know, he's in, he's in some esteemed company there. Like you said, everybody, he's exceeded expectations. But you've got to come along and, and just give it a go. Yes. And, and he really was a surprise package last night. Um, you know, I think Minty used the term there, sneaking under the radar. I think all of a sudden the name Cody McKee is going to be on plenty of people's radars. Well, it is, like you say, he's, he's in amongst that, um, yeah, top-tier company now, but he's, he's actually in a group that 80% uh, of the people competing at this meeting haven't managed to make. Yes. Uh, just under 20% qualified and uh, just slightly over 80% have uh, basically in the lower tiers or gone home, so... Yeah, he, he's achieved something he would have never dreamed of when I they can, towed that car down from Auckland. I can tell you, every finalist driver and crew is up on the wall watching the seat. Every it, one yes. of them. There is no one left in the pits. Cody was the last one to leave. Scotty Myers, you a bit excited at the moment? Oh, hey, I'm excited there's no rain. <laughs> you and me both, but uh, Jack did well last night. Yeah, he struggled a bit. Hopefully tonight he's uh, got it on the money, but uh, certainly can't uh, have the same... Uh, night tonight that he had last night he was lucky to qualify so uh, he needs to get it together tonight big field and everything all the crews up there watching this track for the first one it's exceptionally hot does that change your mind on things yeah hey it's going to go slick pretty quick it's going to be pretty fast racing out there but uh, you know it's good to see that uh, everyone's come out for the second night um, you know obviously it's down a fair bit but it's good to see them here gone racing thank you Mitzi with Scotty Myers Eddie Dodson Leads us away, it's the Place of Builders Limited Tier 3 Championship. Dodson leads, but it's Matt Nielsen who gets the drive off turn two, puts the bumper in, got a couple of cars with some issues. Oh no, round goes Tom Cooper. Oh look at this, all four of them down wide to the concrete wall, Pickard finds the grass. So again, tricky surface here at the moment. Round goes the 54 and 52. Matt Nielsen and now Phil Ogle in the 282 makes his way up towards the front. Started off grid six at Ogle.
So here, as they come around and complete two laps. Oh, the lights have gone red. <laughs> Scott Penn thinking why. We had red. Robbie, maybe. Yeah. That's still going hard. Boy, I'm making ground up quickly here, then realised everybody else was stationary. This track's very, very wet at the moment, just sliding out a little bit. They put a lot of water on it. It's got, uh, it's really slippy. The cars are coming in and they're just going straight out to the wall. It will dry out, but all that water is just making it real hard for them to drive. Yeah, well, of course, that, that's the thing. That's the difference between prepping the track from last night to tonight too, isn't it? Where, where last night, every race, like, like the, for these guys here, this race is important, but in the mm. context of the weekend, uh, these early races are about setting the track for race five and then uh, into the rest of the evening. See, just picking springs up off the track again in front of the commentary box. We had that last night and uh, we're seeing it again already in race one tonight. Race leader is the 147 of Matt Nielsen. So we see him there, just uh, halfway down the main straight back to Phil Ogle. How good to see Phil Ogle back in the car. Oh, fantastic, um, isn't it? You know, one of the long time runners. But the car to uh, take a look at is the green number 34 of Rebecca Barr. Uh, she is up there, where, where would we say that? She's in uh, first, second, third, maybe sixth spot. Rebecca Barr, 34P, started on grid 26. <laughs> Good to see the 307 car of Matthew Pickard back out there, although sad to see him on the infield after that big hit he took last night. Here we go. Oh, and now Robbie maybe stalled it right down in front of race control. Oh, and he gets hit by his brother. <clears throat> Not something you see every day. No. So Robbie may be stalled in the 33A car, and that was the, the big group of cars came roaring around through turn four, and, and that was that thing in amongst that group. Uh, the first two cars can take action, mm. uh, but then the car, next car following in behind doesn't have the chance to react, and uh, just unfortunately it was his brother, Paul maybe, hard up the backside of the 33A. Matt Nielsen coming off turn four. Phil Ogles just dropped back a wee bit in the 95 of Daryl Williams has come up into second. He started on grid 12, so some good progression uh, for him. Matt Nielsen, race leader, started on grid three. Here we go, ready for a restart, we go. Nielsen just drifts it a wee bit wide through turn two. Phil Ogle in 282 has much better track position. Gets up the inside. These two could have a lively battle most of the night. As Shannon Orr, hard and fast, but gets himself bundled up across the front of Ethan Levine, takes him to the wall. So the 282 of Phil Ogle now pulling away. From 147. Rebecca Barr at 34 had moved up to third. We got AJ Angston, who's gone around down in turn number two. Oh, stylish from the 95. That was, that was impressive. Yeah. <laughs> so AJ Angston's looking for a gap. Is he going to find it here now? Yes, he will. So our race leader, Phil Ogle. 282. And look at this, we're into lap six, we're halfway. Oh! 85, Dan Pollock. Just poleaxed into the concrete wall. I oh, know I missed that. I think uh, we did catch it on the screen. I'm not sure whether he did that by himself. He's mobile again in a way. We're going red for Pickard, I think, in the 307. Uh, down in turn two. Oh man, Dan Pollock in the 85. Yeah, I didn't went, see that at all. He Paul. went very hard backwards. Uh, well, his right, right rear, and then in, into the wall, and then flicked the car around and slapped the concrete. And uh, there didn't seem to be anybody around, so I don't know whether he'd been punched and sent wide, or whether he was just out of control and too got, hard and fast himself. Got a quick second, Paul? Yeah. Johnny Booker uh, down here, you're having a look at the track because you've got somebody out there racing in the finals. What do you what do you read? What's your change going to do now? Yeah, no, I think the track's going to still out uh, being a good track and always has been and uh, obviously they've wet it for this one and uh, I think it's going to end up quite grimy or most of the night. Yeah, it's sledging at the moment going into three and four, one and two. You've got a few more races yet. You, you comfortable with your setup, the plan you've done so far? 
Yeah, I think we will be. I mean, there's another race after this, like I say, and uh, we'll just watch watch that down that corner there and see what happens. And uh, it'll just depend on, uh, on, I suppose, everybody will get a little water and we'll just judge it from there. Here we go, Minty with John Booker. Another great racer of years gone by. So back to this Classic Builders Limited Tier 3 Superstock Championship. It's our race leader. The yellow number 282, round turn two. Now there's a battle for second. Rebecca Barr, 34, Matt Nielsen, 147. And Barr gets the advantage. Nielsen runs wide, so all Levine almost up the inside. A little bit too fast. He had to go onto the brakes a wee bit. Oh, Ogle overcooks it coming off turn two. As to ease right off the gas, this is going to close the gap up big time. It was three and a half seconds at the last lap. Now down to 1.05. So Rebecca Barr's closed up that gap. She just needs to keep the pressure on as the 46 of Ethan Levine dives up the inside of Matt Nielsen, moves him up into third. There's the white flag, one to go. For the Stratford racer. Rebecca Barr puts the bumper into the Scott McEwen car. She's racing hard, she knows she's got Levine White on her tail. But it will be Phil Ogle who takes the win. One Paul down here, Pete Breeze, the end of that uh, race. Peter, what's that taught you about the track? Uh, not much at all that you didn't already know. Oh, no, it's changed since the river charge. I bet it has. It's not as hot and it's a little bit wetter and it'll come back, won't it? Yeah, and Stan always gets the back, so we're just keeping an eye on it because a couple of races before us yet. What would you do if it doesn't? Like, let's say it stayed like this, what would you do to your car? I'd have to loosen it up. By loosening it up, what are we meaning? Are we reducing the weight on the shocks? What, left or right? What are we doing? Oh, because the track's a bit off camera in turn three, I'd put it on into the right rear to loosen it up. So tighten things up, put it to the right rear, get better drive off the right rear, is that what you're saying? Oh, that, but you also get better turn in. Indeed it is, there is Pete Rees, they're down here, they're having a look at the track. All the drivers are down here, the three Rees brothers, the Joblins, they're all here looking. They're just saying it's going to come back, it's a bit of excitement down here, I'm telling you. Oh, you just feel that uh, excitement. And anticipation, I got it up here in the commentary box. Yeah, look, and, that, and that's the thing. It's um, you know we've seen the trials and tribulations of track prep over the years, uh, but traditionally, will to do it. It's one of the better ones, but that big ask, isn't it? From you know a big night of racing last night to the heat of today to the reaper charge to getting it sorted for us now. And so as Pete Rees. 10G was just saying, still a couple of races to go. So they're up at race five. So that was race two. So in theory, they can watch they'll, they'll they can watch one more race. Then there's a teams race. Remember? Which remember they, that thing? They won't learn much from that. No. And and so and but then they're up after that. So yes. they'll be needing to get in their cars and have it sorted by then they anyway. Will. So I'd say they'll watch half of this race, um, which we saw. Halfway through that race was where it started to, uh, you know, the slippery nature of the track that uh, disappeared. By the time we get to that race, which is still like basically three races away, isn't it? Two more races and the gaps in between. Yes. Uh, certainly, I think turn four is going to be in shade by then. It might still be a bit of sun on turn one, but yeah, most of it's going to be in shade by the time we get to heat one of the championship, I would think. The St. Nicholas is a familiar sight around Bluff as she steams out to capture Can Do Fishing's famous Bluff Kinner. Once caught, the Kinner is brought back to the purpose-built factory in Bluff where it is processed, packed and shipped fresh to you. But that's not all that Can Do Fishing can do for you. Try some of their green bone fish or delicious power products and you will soon see why seafood from the Bluff is world famous. So head to your local fish market or supermarket and ask for Can Do Fishing Kinner, Fish or Power. Can Do Fishing, there's nothing we can't do for you.
Yeah, down. Damien Orr, how are you feeling? Yeah, good mate. Uh, just ready to get into it now. It's been a long time. This waiting sucks, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It certainly does. So KFC today? Nah, no KFC today, but I had some yesterday, so hopefully I haven't upset anything. Mate, Carl, happy. You're happy last night. You fixed the brakes. It's all had a spanner check today. It's good as gold. Yeah, I'm happy as. I just want to get out there and do it now, eh? Good luck with the R on you, mate. Go out there, go hard, go fast, and have some fun, eh? Yep, thanks, Mindy. Damien Orr, there you go, Paul. Yeah, uh, one of two of the local cars. Of course, last year he was the only to do a finalist. And that, uh, that joke here about the KFC last year, he was eating KFC in Wanganui every day at the championship, and he <laughs> came home in fifth place. Uh, and so, yeah, hopefully he hasn't jinxed himself by not eating any KFC today. Um, he'll, so yeah. he'll be back to it next year if he doesn't <laughs> just, do as well. Just a genuinely good guy. Hasn't he yeah. changed as a driver and his ability, his quality of car, yeah. and what he does with a car on the track? It's been awesome to see over the last probably four or five years the change in that young man. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, back to those New Zealand Championships, 98, I was in the old announcer's box, which is down where the start finish line is now. Uh, yeah, I was you, down. you were on the infield? On, on the infield doing photographs back in uh, 98. That's, 19, that's going to be cool. Yeah, 1985, I was standing, we were allowed to stand on the fence at that point. 1985, yes. so I was 11 years old, watching my very first New Zealand Championship, leaning on the fence down just above where the flashing lights are in turn two. I actually can't remember where I was in 95, in 85, Paul. I would say then as, a, as an office to big meetings, I probably turned up and it was a case of finding a gap where there was one. <laughs> Speaking Wondering gaps, where all the fans come from. Yeah, speaking of gaps, there's a few empty ones here. Adam Joblin, 2NZ, was supposed to be on the outside of the front row. Saw some major issues with him in the repercharge, didn't we? This is the PTS Championship Tier 2. So this is all the drivers that we saw in the repercharge. And problems for Blake Adamson uh, off the start, but now he's got the car fired up and moving. Stanaway, Beasley, Eulenberg and Hamilton are out there. So a few cars missing. Oh, we've got a tangle up coming down into turn four. And Van Leershout's driven right up the concrete wall. It was Alex Hill who got uh, tangled up with him and drove him up the wall, but he's come back down and popped out at the rear of the field. Yulenberg slaps the concrete wall in turn one and uh, turn three and four. Richard Gaskin just with some issues, got a big push in the 22. Tries to get that sorted with Gary Hunter right on his tail. Got Big Rumney there in the seven and also the 722. Got David Lowe. So good battle for second as Jamie Hamilton gets up the inside of Brendan Beasley, moves up to second spot, and still Thomas Stanaway, who is your race leader. Started on grid four. Jamie Hamilton on grid 10. And they are your race leaders. So the PTS Logistics Championship heats one. But remember, this is race two, because this is all the drivers that we saw in the Reaper Charge uh, earlier on tonight. And then we added in a couple uh, in Adamson, uh, no, sorry, Brendan Beasley and Callum Flavel who joined this uh, Tier 2 Championship. So the field well split and spread. And the lap time's getting quicker. We've got Jared Wade and Thomas Danaway down into the 16s. So we saw this last night too, the first race or two. As the track started coming together, slowly starting to drift down into those 16s and get closer and closer to our lap record time, still the 16-2. I'm actually the lap record. Jared Wade at 85k has a big dive underneath Hayden Hart in the 166. Here they are coming off turn four. It's Wade up the inside and he makes the pass. So that's for fifth and sixth. They still battle though. So Wade, he was out there in that, on the truck earlier on. Still the record of the youngest ever New Zealand Superstock champion. So it's white flag this time around. For Thomas Stanaway in the 87 from Hawke's Bay. It's 
the dust flies off turn two. This is somebody was just had a wheel off the race surface. So no pressure at the front for the 87. And likewise with Jamie Hamilton, look at him, he's just eased off. Knows he doesn't need to pass the 49 for another point. Check it flag falls for Thomas Stanaway. So, you know, the, the key thing here to look at, that track again is different again. It um, certainly was, wasn't it? So Thomas Stanaway takes the win, confirming uh, that they're, of course, all unofficial. Uh, ahead of Hamilton, Wade, Hart and Steiner, who round out the top uh, five in that. So that's the PTS Logistics Tier 2 Championship. And again, we look at the... Um, the, the lap times there. So we had Thomas Stanaway who did a 16.7. Jared Wade uh, did a 16.88. Then we had a 17.0, another 17.0. We had three or four 17.0s, a couple of 17.1s. So that pace just a little bit quicker again from the last race. So, you know, the track I think is uh, going to come back nicely. Well, we see really now only the uh, start finish straight in turn one, bait and sunshine now. And we've still got, we've got the we've team got race, team race so, to yeah. go yet. So turn four and the exit to turn four into the start finish straight, getting into that shade. So, yeah, once we get that over the whole lot, the track's going to be a lot more consistent all the way around, isn't it? And uh, a lot easier for the guys to set the cars up for. As we take a look at the Vistamax super screen and some of the... Uh, highlights and replays. So here's where Van Lieshout gets uh, taken up the concrete wall. Just It was just a tangle here with Hayden Hart. And they originally kind of helped point him back, but then Alex Hill just slams into the side of him. That drives the 49H car up the concrete wall. Uh, back down again. And he did continue on in the race. Uh, Van Lieshout down towards the uh, rear of the field. That's where Steiner and uh, Beasley got tangled up. Uh, oh, so there was that... Uh, Puff of dust off turn two. So the stock car teams race now. And uh, in amongst everything else that has gone on over the course of the past few days, uh, how good is it that these stock car teams are able to still race here tonight, which is so great to see. A couple of races, I think. Paul Hope Cup. Yep. Stan's put all that water on the track. Now, we were up around 30, 31 degrees before. It's taken about 8 or 9 degrees out of the track, which is what he wanted. So, track temperature down. It's still a little bit rutty from the, uh, the big machine, but that will smooth out. Build it, make it, fix it, shift it, tow it, stow it, dig it, lift it, mow it, trim it, grind it, chip it. Gentlemen, this is for the Ross Orr Memorial. The first time in 2021 that we've seen anything other than super stocks on track, and we've had 132 of those. Waikato on pole. Waikato have got pole, okay. So this is the Ross Orr Memorial. It is a stock car teams race. We see the Rotorua Rascals resplendent in the silver, lining up on the pit straights, the Waikato Raiders, and some of those famous Waikato colours. They're on the main straight. We're going to see some hot laps. So four hot laps for the cars, just a chance to get a feel for the racetrack before they put it all on the line in a team's race. Uh, so they just get a feel for the track, make sure their cars are sorted, and then we go team's racing. And if you haven't uh, seen team's racing before, we will explain it and how it all works in a moment. So let's take a look at the lineups for the Rotorua Rascals. 52 around through turn one and two. 52 is Mike Herbert. 735 
is Keegan Orr. 28 is Alex Jones in her debut in the Rascals this weekend. 58 is Robbie Sisson. No, I, th no, no, I think he raced for the Rascals uh, in Stratford, I think, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and then we've got Dion Henderson at 5-4-4. So that's your Rascals side. And for the Waikato Raiders, uh, we've got the 8-H of Larry Henderson. Behind him, the 3-6-1 of Clinton Cheatham. 27, Brett Aiken is next. Then it's the 24. Uh, is that the 24? It's out there. Is that Phil yep. Pot? Justin Hutchby is 88H. So they're still going. They were still under green. Now the orange flag drops. So those are your hot laps. So the cars have, and drivers have had the opportunity to familiarise themselves with the race surface. So stock car teams racing, Barry. Uh, for those who are in the crowd who, who are going, what's going on here? Uh, how does teams racing work? It's quite simple really, isn't it? And uh, the, the one thing about it was matching team bodies. Easy to identify. You've got one team from Rotorua, one from Waikato. Basically, you've got to get one of your team across the line first by... Uh, whatever means possible. And, within, you know, within the rules. Within the rules, yeah. you're not allowed to come off the infield and attack or drive in the wrong direction. But yeah, within the rules, uh, the, the teams normally, uh, I'd be interested to see tonight whether they're going to run four or five cars. Hopefully it will be five per team, but some of them will send one runner out and four guys to defend and try and guide that runner through. And some will send two and uh, three others to do the job of blocking. But um, yeah, you'll see some of them at race speed and some of them crawling around the pole line and waiting. And uh, yeah, all you've got to do is get one of your uh, team members across the line first and your team has won the race. So there we go, you used a couple of terms there, runner and blocker. So the runner quite obviously is the car that's out there running as fast as they can to try and get to the finish line. But then you've also got blockers on your team, the cars that are out there to, to stop the other team's runners. So if you're a runner, you've got to look out because the other team's blockers are going to be trying to take you out while your blockers are trying to stop the other team and maybe stop them. Oh, it's just so full on. And, and the secret is that most of the plans go out of the window and turn <laughs> one on lap one, and uh, guys who have been given one designated role, all of a sudden that changes. And that's uh, what makes the good teams, where everybody is aware that their previous plan's gone out of the book and, uh, and can think of another one quick. They don't get to stop and ever talk about it. No, they don't. Uh, no so communication. So what uh, they're trying to do down there is some shock adjustments. These cars aren't as flash as the super stock, so a lot more manual things to do on the shocks. They can't have those gas pressurised things. They can't have a lot of things that the super stocks have got. They run basic car tyres or light truck tyres, so that at the moment the temperature tyres is way lot less. So they've got to manually adjust these lot of things. So what you're talking is a very basic stock car. Normally running V6s or 4.1 Falcons, 4 litre Falcons is the majority of these cars but very manual in their setup, very simple in their shocks and suspension and those sorts of things. But one and a half tonnes and about, two, about 240, 250 horsepower. So yes, we saw there the hot laps and now that most of those 10 cars pulled up to the pit gates and uh, the three minutes they, the crews are given to make any last minute adjustments to the cars. And so we see uh, Huntley have pole. Four cars. It's four on four. Okay, so Huntley have pole. Uh, so what we'll see here is the 361 of Clinton Cheatham. Uh, so Huntley won the toss, have chosen pole, and he will come up and set uh, where he wants to start. So he's obviously and taking the road car very close yeah, to the wall. Yeah. It's going to line up outside him. And so we, we alternate uh, starting positions. So we see a Waikato car on the inside of the front row. Uh, and that's Clinton Cheatham in the 361. Alex Jones, she's come up to the outside of row, two, of row one. Then when we get to row two, it's Rotorua on the inside, Robbie Sisson in 58. Then onto the outside uh, is the uh, 24 of Brad Philpot. Row three, 27, Brett Aiken for Waikato on the inside with Mike Herbert on the outside. And the back row, Keegan Orr. For Rotorua, 735, and Hutch, Justin Hutch be there in the 88 car. The Ross Orr Memorial is on the line. It's a 12-lap stock car teams race. The Rotorua Rascals taking on the Waikato Raiders. Let's go racing.
Green flag drops, and look at this, straight away we see a couple go away from the front. We see attacks straight off the start as Alex Jones gets taken to the wall by Cheatham. That's allowed Mike Herbert down onto the inside. So it's basically two on two at the moment. With two runners out the front for each of our teams. Alex Jones in 28 has the race lead. Clinton Cheatham is chasing hard. Then it's Brett Aiken. So look here now though. They're going to come around. Robbie Sisson is going to be the first of the block cars. So Alex Jones, she knows she can drive around the outside safely. Clinton Cheatham not so. So he has to put in the big hit. And Robbie Sisson will try and hold up the 361 as long as he can. Now we look for our race leader. Look out in turn three as Mike Herbert takes a big shot from the 27. Race leader though is the 28. Alex Jones for Rotorua. Heads down the straight. Gonna come up behind the uh, 24 car. That's a blocker for Waikato, but he's busy with Keegan Orr. Now Alex Jones, she's gotta look around the outside of Justin Hutchby. Hutch comes across, puts the block on. So this is giving the 361 the chance to catch. Alex Jones gets taken to the grass. So 361 to the race lead now. So Clinton Cheatham, 361, your race leader. 28, Alex Jones sits in second spot. She's having trouble getting past Justin Hutchby. As have many people before her. Yes, oh yes. Uh, but this time, Robbie Sisson puts the block on and uh, takes the 88 car to the infield. And that's allowed Alex Jones pass. So here we go now, Keegan Orr, 735. He's got the block on, and here comes Clinton Cheatham in the 361. So 361 is your race leader. Can Keegan Orr in 735 hold up the 361 long enough? Good support there from the 24. So Orr wasn't able to hold up the 361 long enough for Alex Jones in the 28 to catch. So it's still the 361 of Cheatham, who is your race leader. So we've seen a couple of moves here where You've seen the blockers. Oh, look out in turn four. Alex Jones gets a big shot from uh, Hutchby. She would have felt that one. And has it. It's disabled the 28, has it? She's trying to get the car refired. Another big shot. Double whammy. So no movement from the 28. So 27 H is now up into second place. Mike Herbert right on his tail down into turn one and two. That's your battle for second and third. 27 to straight around the outside. So 361, this is Clever Racing from Waikato. 361, Clinton Cheatham, your race leader, Justin Hutchby is uh, riding shotgun for him. Okay, down the main straight, 735. Keegan Orr is your race leader. Here comes Cheatham. Mike Herbert now up into third. So this is first, second, third. They are all within striking distance. Three, six, one. Then the 27 and now 52, Mike Herbert. But now Herbert's got Hutchby right on him and he's gonna take him down into the wall. Doesn't quite put him all the way there. 27 now takes the lead. And Mike Herbert continues to close the gap. Nine laps gone, 12 is the lap distance. A little bit of hesitation from Aiken and Cheatham. And it's, oh good, nice try in the shot there from the 24 of Philpot. So 27 is your race leader for Waikato. Mike Herbert, 52 for Rotunua, closing the gap. The white flag is going to fall. It is essentially a sprint race now. 27, Brett Aiken from Waikato. He needs a clean lap. Oh, there's a block car down there. <laughs> Just about to roll over on the infield there with Cheatham. Good race from the Waikato Raiders. A tight fight back, but it's going to be the 27 car that takes the win for Waikato. And the Ross Orr Memorial with his grandson, Keegan Orr, part of this rascal side. Not able to win the shield, take the shield, this one. The Waikato Raiders will take victory. And a good drive from Brett Aiken. It was Clinton Cheatham who did all the hard work early. Yeah, it was a good team effort, wasn't it? It was. Hutchby with uh, his blocking skills out there.
they all, they all each of them played a role they in, did. in making that happen. And that's what teams racing's about, isn't it? The, the whole team has to play their role to uh, emerge victorious. So yeah, great drive from the, the North Waikato Bins sponsored Waikato Raiders. So as they get set for their victory lap, put your hands together for Brad Aiken, Justin Hutchby, Brad Philpotts, Clinton Cheatham, and uh, Larry Henderson. Sat that one out on the infield in the 8H as reserve. But you can now cast your eyes to the Vistamax super screen. And we'll take in some of those pit shots when we can. Minty, you're wandering around down there uh, on the track. I'm just looking, your eye I'm looking down here. How good does that look, eh? Hey? No, I, I don't know really what to say. We're about to go, as the Waikato team go around with the, the shield, we're about to start the championship. Three heats, technical welding services. Here at Rotorua, we've had the most magnificent opening. We've probably had the toughest week in Speedway, and Brownie and I talked about this. It's yes. been a tough old week, but we're here now. We're ready to go. There's crews standing around cars. There's cars now that have got uh, little calling fans trying to keep the drivers inside the cars cool. We've got one patch of sun left on the track, which Stan will be loving. 7 o'clock, what we say? The sun would be gone. It is. This means the track will stay so much cooler with no sun on it. Mm -hmm. But, but I think the action's going to launch and, out. And we can actually see out the window up here now that was all reflection <laughs> before. Uh, yeah, you're right. Look, that, that sun's just dropped behind one of those hills there. And right where the water truck is now uh, is just that one spot, and, and it's not going to take long. That By the time we get to Green Flag, uh, that could be gone as well. Quite, in, quite deep indentations from that big roller in the track, bigger than what we've had this week, and that was due to the fact the water on it and the softness and Stan wanting to get that moisture in when it went really, really hot early on. But uh, I don't think that's going to really affect what happens in a straight line. The corners look pretty good, but right now I'd say the nerves down there on that uh, dummy grid, the dry mouth, the belts, they're checking for about the 19th time. Hey, can I can I just jump in, and I don't want to steer attention away from the New Zealand Superstock Championships, but it's been decided there's going to be a second team's race tonight uh, between the Raiders and the, and the Rascals. So that might explain why we did a four on four yes. in that one. So uh, so that's exciting. So there'll be the chance for uh, a bit of payback uh, for the Rascals, all the, the Raiders to inflict further, uh, yeah, further, further damage pay. and pain for the Rascals. Yes. Um, and, and that was an exciting team's race, man. Uh, so as you as you left the pits, Minty, the drivers, as you, I think you were talking about Vickery, they were just starting to think about those final moments. Big business or small business, we've got mobile solutions to give any size business an edge. Our regionally based account managers can scope your business and deliver to your evolving needs. Take control of your team's business mobiles with individual plans or shared data pools, along with solutions that offer increased control over device and data security and the flexibility to easily manage your team's mobiles and apps. Whatever your business, whatever your size, talk to your Spark customer lead or business hub today. Ah, oh, and we are excited, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, race fans from around Aotearoa and watching around the world. This is it, the Technical Welding Services New Zealand Superstock Championships for 2021. And what a lineup! Wherever you are positioned around this amazing facility or sitting on your lounge at home, watching through the pits tv we welcome you in this is what we've been waiting for jason long and brett nichols on the front row row two mitch vickery and uh, the 54 s car alongside the paul johnson uh, we've got on a grid number five which should be 66r of steve hampton josh prentice outside him in the 5g william hunt freeze and keegan levine then kerry remnant and jack myers wrap up the front five rows then we go to peter rees off grid 11 hamish booker outside him on 12. asher rees and pete bengston on 13 and 14. then back to the repercharge race winner ryan hunt who will start on grid 15 with one of the local hopes damian orr on grid 16. quinn ryan many people picking him tonight he is starting this first heat on grid 17 and cody mckee out of Auckland, off grid 18. Wayne Hemi, former champion on grid 19. The defending champ, Randall Tarrant alongside on number 20. Then the 127G of Ethan Rees will start off grid 21. Wellington stalwart Dale Robertson 
We'll have the Nissan firing from grid 22. Mark Costello, second in the Reaper charge. He joins the big game tonight and starts on grid 23. Shane Malsop off 24. And the back row for this one, 106 HD is Curry. And two-time champion Simon Joblin starting off grid number 26. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, are you ready? This is going to be big. It has been six days in the making. The New Zealand Superstock Championships. Minty, are you ready to go? What's your final thoughts? Well, it's ready five days ago. Let's just do it. They are on it. I want to be on it. You're on it. Let's do it. Barry Brown. It's going to be fantastic. You just get the feeling it's going to be one of those the absolutely elite field and we've got a whole lot of little groups out there. You're not going to see it in Heat 1, I don't think, but uh, wait for Heat 2. 26 of the best superstock drivers from around New Zealand have been through the qualifying process and the wait and the rain. But now they sit in their cars, getting prepared. The Rotorua Stock Car Club and Technical Welding Services bring to you the 2021 New Zealand Super Stock Championships. Cheer on your heroes. Open your eyes. Buckle up nice and tight. Paradise Valley Speedway is set to erupt. The 2021 New Zealand Super Stock Championships Heat One is go! So here we got this big push into turn number one. Oh, Brent Nichols is the first one to be slightly turned around. Bounces off the concrete wall. Sideways for Rees. Quinn Ryan's gone around. Ryan Hunt out of control onto the infield. And down into turn number four. Riding high is, uh, is the 82 car. And now into turn one and two for the second time. Nichols is having problems getting through there. He's wide again. Big move from Prentice. Here comes Jack Myers. And Peter Rees puts the big bumper oh, into the 88. Already? Yeah, that started. Look at this now. Four wide. It is fast. It is fierce. Down the main straight. Damien all getting squeezed up and out. And now into turn three. Oh, Kerry Remnant sideways. William Humphreys. He's going backwards in a hurry. Dale Robertson and Randall Tarrant pick up a couple of spots. Now Brett Nichols puts the big bumper into uh, William Humphreys. As Damien Orr has got some issues. Humphreys wobbles the concrete wall again in the 94. Out front, though, it is Jason Long is your race leader from Steve Hampton in the 66. Mitch Vickery, 26. Then Josh Prentice and Peter Rees, Ethan Rees and Asher Rees. Wow. Oh, and here we go. We've got a big tangle up down there off turn four. Ryan Hunt and Des Curry come together and they can't get those cars separated. Desperately trying to get off. I think that wheel's hooked over now of the Ryan Hunt car. They're tangled up in turn four. So a hectic opening, five laps. We are five into it. There are another 10 to go. These two are desperate to get off each other, but they can't make the move. Up the inside of Hamish Booker go the Rees clan. Of course, and here comes Dale Robinson and Randy Tarrant. Dale Robinson coming, he's from grid 22, remember? And he's now up onto grid eight, or up into eighth place. Randall Tarrant, defending champ, he's come from grid 20. So there's been some big moves. Ethan Reese from 21, he's right up there as well. Look at Joplin, look at Joplin come. Out front though, it is the uh, 41. First, second, third, all looking pretty, oh, Josh Prentice. Had it coming together there, big coming together with Dale Robinson. Oh, look at the 72, Simon Joblin. We hadn't mentioned him yet. Remember, he's come from grid 26. And is now up to 10th. This track is on fire tonight at Paradise Valley Speedway. And the lap times, they are fast. Still long from Hampton and Vickery. And they're all looking nice and comfortable though. Vickery, oh, round goes Nichols. He's overcooked it right in front of Joblin and Prentice. How much damage has that done to Joblin? Prentice, he's obviously got some issues now. He's uh, come to a standstill. He gets it fired up again. And the Reasers have to run real wide. Randall Tarrant right up on the tail now as well, up to seventh place.
Simon Joblin, he's dropped down to 14th. He was running up in, uh, up to about 7th place at one stage. William Humphreys has made a good comeback, as has Peter Beanston. 12 laps gone, we've got 3 to go. Randall Tarrant, the 1NZ, he's on fire. He is absolutely flying. He's, he's just passed Ethan Reeves in the 127 and Asher. White flag, not far away for the 41. Oh, Cody McKee's gone around. We've got some smoke coming from the 82. Onto the pit straights comes the 41. White flag out for Jason Long. One lap to go. As they are sorting themselves out into this final lap of this heat one battle. Fast, ferocious. Fierce and Jason Long takes the win. Wow, flag to flag, what a battle. That is so fast out there. Jason Long unofficially takes the win. From 66, Steve Hampton, 26K, Mitch Vickery, then the 10G of Peter Rees, Randall Tarrant up into fifth place, Ethan Rees, home in sixth, Asher in seventh, Jack Myers, 88 in eighth, 89 in ninth, Dale Robertson, Keegan Levine rounds out your top 10, the 5W. Peter Benston home in 11th place with his Palmy club mate, uh, William Humphreys in 12th. Quinn Ryan, good recovery up to 13th, considering he got spun right at the opening lap. Simon Joblin dropped down to 14th after a mid-race battle. Shane Malsop in 15th, 98 Mark Costello in 16th. Then Paul Johnson, Kerry Remnant, Josh Prentice, Hamish Booker taking us down to 20th place. And then Brett Nichols, the last of our uh, finishes home. And DNFs uh, for uh, McKee or Curry, Hunt and Hemi. Uh, missed what happened to Wayne Hemi um, um, in that one. Dropped the oil drive belt. The oil drive belt's fallen off. No oil pressure in the 591 immediately to the infield. So just dropped the belt. Jason Long takes the win, ladies and gentlemen. Your New Zealand champion two years ago taking the victory down in Christchurch. And he draws first blood in the New Zealand championship battle for 2021. And some good support for the... Rugby star, of course, plays for the Hawks Bay Magpies in the Mitre 10 Cup. Works for the union as uh, in the sponsorship area as well. And, of course, a second generation super stock star. And he takes the special commemorative flags. All of our drivers here at Paradise Valley get a special flag for winning a race. But tonight they're extra special with the uh, New Zealand Championship logo. As we look at some of the replays on the big screen here's where the two palmy cars Humphreys and Bingston got together and almost up and over there uh, the 54 getting tangled up and uh, spun up in front the Paul Johnson car just got well, so I can tight tell you how they fixed the uh, weighing thing Paul yes at the pit gate there is a board saying cars to weigh oh, okay. so they have a white board as the cars come off saying cars to weigh if you missed that chat earlier on, the uh, first five, uh, first three first cars, three, first yes. three cars uh, must be waiting. So you see Quinn Ryan, the pick for a lot of people, got spun around uh, right on the opening lap. Uh, so that dropped him down from his seventh with 17. But a good recovery up to 13. Up to but, 13. But, so. you know, only four spots. But, yeah. hey, there's still a lot to play out. Okay. There is. Um, as, as we look at, you know, more of those replays on the screen, let's, let's analyse now, Barry. You've... You've been there scribbling away and making some notes since uh, the chequered flag drop. Who were our big moves? Certainly, you know, this is the heat. The guys starting in the back 10 spots had to make the moves. The 1NZ, Randall Tarrant, he was on fire, as you said. Uh, grid 20 up to 5th. Uh, 17G of Ethan Reeves, grid 21 up to 6th. So they were the two biggest movers, up 15 spots each. But uh, Dale Robertson as well in ninth place from uh, grid 22, so up 13 spots. So uh, you guys in the, in the top four spots, uh, Peter Rees came from grid 11. Those, those other guys all started right right up the front and uh, they did what was expected when, when you're in the uh, when second, third, fourth, when you start in that first couple of rows. So Jason Long, that was a clear victory. Um, it'll be 
Uh, really good to keep an eye on him, obviously, in those uh, other two heats as he works his way back through the field and see if he can make the same sort of ground that uh, Randy Tarrant did, but that was an impressive drive. It was. Uh, Simon Joblin from Grid 26, he ended up 14th? 14th, yeah. Uh, so, so that's plus 12. Uh, wholesale tyres in Fakatane. Need truck tyres? Wholesale tyres. Good tyres, better prices, great people. You know, we talk about making these passes and, and that's it. So the more cars you can pass, the more points you, you, you're getting. There's no point starting in 26th and finishing in 26th place no. and getting one point. It's not going to do you any good. So you've got to pass those cars. So that's why, you know, you look at those guys. So again, Randall Tarrant, the current 1NZ, where did he start? Uh, grid 20 up to 5th. Okay, so Grid 20 up to 5th. So the biggest mover of the race, up 15 spots. Yeah, and, and Ethan Reese the same, Grid 21 to 6. Yep. So they, they came through the field together. Yeah, so it's all about making passes. So while Jason Long picked up the win in that race and has scored more points than Randall Tarrant. Effectively, Randall Tarrant is ahead of him in the overall scheme of things at the moment. It, it's quite technical, but it's... Yes, it's, that's, that's right. Randall Tarrant's had his worst grid now. Yes. He's got a 7 and a 13 to come. His grid's only going to get better. Jason Long's only going to get worse for the rest of the night. And then, like you say, by the end of the night, if Jason Long has another good run in the next one from 14 and makes it up to, say, the top five, yeah. all of a sudden... There's going to be a lot of people looking for him in that third heat. Maybe. And, and he's got lots of friends, but who knows? We're talking about a couple of club mates here too, yes. so um, that could get interesting. And, and you got all those reasons who were all up there, weren't they? Peter They Ethan were. And P P Peter in fourth, Ethan in sixth, and Asher in seventh. So, yeah, all right up there on the points at the moment. All made ground from where they started. The PG Hydraulics Championship. The smallest field of the weekend. Set to go. So this is just a 12 lap up. And Dale Stewart from the front. The 94 and 599 are on tie. Drops into second place. Well, I'm, I'm glad to see the 741 of Craig Chatfield and the uh, 117 of James Nicholson back out on the racetrack after their exclusions last night for uh, incorrect safety gear. So it was just an exclusion from last night's racing. Yeah, obviously been out and spent a bit of money today. Yes. <laughs> so this is, oh, down in turn number three, Ron Ty, it's Punched out to the concrete, courtesy of Nick Davey in the 26P. Up front though, Dale Stewart. Just had a horror run last night. The brand new car, it's only done a couple of meetings. Um, immaculate looking machine. And just had a yeah, terrible run last night in the 94. I suppose you, you actually look at this entire field and the fact they're racing down and the lowest grade tonight based on the points they earned or the points they didn't earn last night uh, has finished them down here into uh, this particular group uh, shows they all had a pretty rugged night at the racetrack and a couple go round the uh, 117 car out of Nelson James Nicholson 911 Carl Subble from Rotorua has stopped down there as well in turn four and we've got oh, Murphy's Law there we go. Lights go red just as he fires down. Must make the point through all those um, results and sort of points we've been talking about all unofficial at this stage. Um, we'll definitely tell you when we get the official results through because there was a lot of changes last night, wasn't there? And most of them there was, you know, one guy if he crosses over the pole line, he lose two spots, two other guys go up. You yes. know, it, it can affect three drivers. Well, it does affect three drivers. And uh, changes your points totals quite quickly and uh, we, we saw quite a bit of that that night. They were warned at driver's briefing that they were going to be tougher on pole line infringements and the likes here this weekend and uh, they, they were doubly warned about it tonight so we uh, 
we, we're looking at those, but yeah, it's not official at this stage. So the PG Hydraulics Championship continues, lap six. And it's still the 94 who leads. But I tell you what, the 26 is closing in fast, and Nick Davey, they've gone from a one and a half second difference to 0.7. First and second. Craig Chatfield along the main straight ahead of the 58s. Stephen Royguard. So there's your race leaders off turn two. Onto the main straight here at Paradise Valley Speedway. 94 Brent Stewart. 26 Nick Davian marks the north and second spot. Of course, Paradise Valley Speedway celebrating 50 years of racing this weekend. It's 1970 71 season. That the stock cars first came to Paradise Valley. So, up amongst some of the back markers, a couple of the Hunter cars, we've got Barry Hunter, Junior, Russell Hunter, the brothers, the sons of the 1990 champion, the late Barry Hunter Senior. Dale Stewart will bring the 94 R car home. Ahead of 26, Nick Davey. In third place. Go to the 741 of Craig Chatfield and the Silver Bullet. Nowadays, with not a lot of silver on it, fastest <laughs> lap of the race, uh, Nick Davey uh, with a 16.8 in second, uh, just a second behind uh, Dale Stewart, Nick Davey, Craig Chatfield, Stephen Royguard, Ron Ty, uh, your top five in the provisional results, the PG Hydraulics Championship. So, as soon as we can, we will be hitting pit side and Getting some of the thoughts from the drivers. Obviously, they've uh, had a race now to get some time to get out of their cars. And obviously, while we want to talk to them, the people they probably want to talk to first off are their crew mm. and decide where they go to from here, what might need to be changed on the car just slightly to give it an advantage. Because Have we got time? Yeah, we've got plenty of time. 106H is out. 106H is out, he has blown his Raptor gearbox, it's in two pieces down there. I'm down with the 88P, they are rebuilding the whole front of that motor. It's ripped off the drive belts, the fans clipped the radiator, massive amount of work. Down on the 591 of Wayne Hemi, he's just given me his oil drive belt, he's brought it up to me. That belt's gone ballistic, they're trying to get it back on, it's ripped all the teeth off the belt and that stopped it driving. Um, what else we got? 58 bent rim, the rim was jammed onto the brake caliper on the right front and he had no go forward, he was lucky to finish. 48 n broken left front stub axle, brake caliper and all that configuration on the left side of the car. What else we got, 98 n drive tyre, 88 P I said drive belts. 5G, the left side rail is ripped off that car, they've got the welder out. They are trying to fix that freak frantically now. 72P, the side rail is bashed into the headers, they're pushing that out. Um, it's carnage down here, Paul. I've just run around the whole pit, so I'm hoping I've got everybody, but man, there's some wreck gear. For any powder coating job, no matter the size, Invercargill's powder line can deliver the desired professional finish. Specialising in powder coating and thermoplastic coating for any aluminium or steel items. Powder line services are suitable for both domestic and commercial purposes with two large ovens on site. Powder line can powder coat anything from mag wheels, car parts, gates, spring car frames to house flashings, garden seats and aluminium window frames. With 280 colours on site for customers to choose from, we have access to thousands more, which are available by order. Give the friendly off the staff a call to book your job in now. Suffered uh, a bit of backwards movement in the opening heat. Heat one winner was the 282 of Phil Ogle. Starts down towards the back of this one. One run away, gets another 12 lap up. Classic Builders Limited Tier 3 Championship and the big push into turn one and two. And oh, we got Kieran O'Brien. Oh, Rebecca Barr, the big mover in the opening heat, gets spun around and out the back hole, look out down there, and cruncher into the concrete wall. We've got Ellsworth, uh, Kieran O'Brien. Oh, 
Ethan Levine just turned hard, hard right on Phil Ogle. And we've got, uh, trying to pick that car, is it Dan Pollock? It is high up the concrete in turn four. Mm -hmm. Wow, Ethan Levine just, Phil Ogle was out wide and Ethan Levine just turned a hard right and lined him up. So it all went on down there in turn three and four the first time around, so I'm sure we caught plenty of that uh, for some replay action on the Vistabac super screen here at a packed house of TWS Paradise Valley Speedway. Here we go, here's, so here's the action down in uh, turn three. It was Mickelson who was the first to go around, Scott McEwen a little bit uh, tidied up there as well. So look at the uh, look at Ethan Rees. Oh, okay, no, it was uh, maybe not quite as deliberate as I thought it was, it got spun up. Oh, it's the two M cars in there. So here he goes, they're all, they're all tangled here. And Levine, yeah, just gets attacked from uh, Scott Penn and then into Ogle. So Phil Ogle, the Heat 1 winner, remember? Kieran O'Brien gets crunched up and over there with uh, the Hodge tank. Can just uh, tell you, Paul, looking at those uh, yeah. official results, we're waiting, but certainly the top dozen all as called anyway, so no changes there. Just quickly, Paul, I'm down here with the 88 ca 88 P car of Jack Myers, the PDS Logistics race car. These guys are working frantically on the front of this motor. The fans move forward, it's caught the radiator. They've taken the belts off, uh, the belts have peeled off as well from that hit. There's some amazing crew work going on down here. There's belts coming from all sorts of teams from all over the place to try and make them fit. The fans off, uh, it's frantic down here. They're gonna make it, Jack says, but uh, by jingers, there's some hard work going on and a lot of teams helping out. They're running from all directions. All right, hopefully uh, we might get some shots of all that pit work, the frantic action behind the scenes uh, here at Paradise Valley Speedway. As the Pollock car off the wall now and getting towards the infield. We are only one lap into it. Wayne Hemi down here too, they put the belt on. The big problem being is when they start this car, what condition is the motor in? after losing that oil pump drive. So uh, no oil getting pumped around the motor, the big Ford Coronet motor. Um, they're looking a bit pensive at the moment, not quite keen, ready to start it up. They're checking oil, smelling the oil, making sure it's not burnt. Of course, with these dry sumps, about eight or nine litres of oil sitting around waiting for things to happen. And when these motors don't get oil, they hate it at the temperature they're running. Right. Well, we've got plenty more updates coming your way from the pits for the New Zealand Championship and now back to the action on track. We go racing in the Tier 3 Championship race leader. This is the 95 with Gary Lonigan ended up on his roof last night. Uh, but he's your race leader from Josh Kakui and Kakui dives down the inside. And here comes Scott McEwen, he's a lap down in the 25, getting involved in the Big one act, uh, the, the race leader's little battle. The 12 car of uh, Seth Hodge, also a lap down. So it's 88, then 95, he's got a smoking left rear tyre. Is that wheel guard's been punched in? Hodge, oh, I thought he might have had a little hope with him in there, and uh, he won winner. Phil Ogle's gone around and dropped bucket loads of spots. Hodge makes the pass on Lonigan. So Gary Lonigan moved up 14 spots in the opening heat. Started for a 20. Home in sixth. Running hard and fast. Oh, gets taken to the concrete wall that time though. Lonigan, oh, he's lost it. Gary Lonigan is the tyres gone. Where are we? We're only half race distance, six gone. There goes his hopes of taking a trophy home. Oh, Williams! Big spin up. Kieran O'Brien just manages to sneak through there. And Gary Lonigan will be gutted. Oh, they've both gone. Yeah, he's lost both rear tyres, so uh, that'll stop it. Yep. You're not going to go anywhere in a hurry, are you? Oh, Tom Cooper gets punched out to the wall. Kendall, Kendall Ashton sent the Christchurch racer high and wide. 
So race leader is the 88, Josh Kahui, right out on his own. His lead is about seven seconds. So 88, your race leader. Oh. Oh. Riding the concrete wall, it's Darren Williams in the 95K. Uh, the Itchman x Mitch Fabish car, and we're going to go red for Sam Guys. Just a quick one update on the 88P. This, uh, in between the radiator, they put like a foam, um, uh, quite a foam fibrous pad to stop the fan ripping the radiator in half, and that has saved the radiator, thank goodness for the team. The bike jingers, there's a lot of belts, and it's all going back together now as we talk. It will be fine for the next heat. Great to hear, thank you, Minty. And those updates coming thick and fast. So let's look at the replays here. See, Sam Guy's just got out of uh, out of shape, took the hit from yeah. Ashton, and then bang, Cooper into this. Oh, look at Tom Cooper's car launch. Uh, Robbie Morris goes around there at the same time, just getting caught up. And uh, from a different angle, Guy's around Ashton. Yeah, watch look, Cooper look in the Cooper. yellow car. Wow. <laughs> I think these things are 1,500 kgs too, so they don't uh, lift off the deck easily, do they? Certainly don't. The Mick Welder is working overtime on the Josh Prentice 5G. That side rail there is cut off, bands going on. It's been straightened up, but now the welders are putting the side rail back on. That car's not a pretty sight, but they're going to get it back out by the looks of it. It's going to be uh, a bit secondhand but it's going to be okay. Both three cars are good, they're finished, gassed up, ready to go. So, race leader. Brett Nichols, they've replaced that whole left front, it's the wheels back on, the car's back on the ground, he is right for the next heat, all good. Good stuff. Josh Kahui in turn one, right in front of the uh, big screen, is our race leader, second place. All the way back to 27, just coming off turn four now. Well, actually, sorry, the 14 of AJ Axton's has moved up into second place. But still a big lead. And the white flag out, so one to go as Ethan Levine gets loose. Kahui. Off turn four, and across the line, it's the chicken flag. Second place, we go all the way back to the 14. Of those close that gap up a lot is AJ Axton's in the closing laps. Down to five seconds. Oh, and Rebecca Bar loose again. Oh! Oh, we'll watch that one. That could be something to keep an eye on, on the official little, results. A little bit suspect, I think, yeah. wasn't it? Uh, but definitely turn four, and you can see the, the tie mark. She's well out of the corner yes. by the time she rejoined again. Something we spoke about quite a lot last night, and uh, we can just reiterate that. Any cars that do go onto the infield, carted onto the infield, you do have to rejoin in the same straight or the same corner which you left the track, which means uh, in some of these cases you, you have to loop around, you can't just dive across. Right. Quick update too on the Peter Bengston car. They have replaced the right, uh, the left front uh, brakes, brakes, caliper, and wheel, and remedied all that car. It's all back together. The frantic work that's going on here. Most of those cars are fixed. The lapped out on the 5G, the 591, and the 88. They're the three cars of concern. Plus the 106 of Des Curry that is out with a blind gearbox, unrepairable. Right, thanks for that, Minty. Right, we're going to head down to the pits, and it's time to catch up with heat one winner of the New Zealand Superstock Championships. Uh, over to Bianca with Jason Long. Hey team, so I'm here uh, in the pits with Jason Long. You've got to be happy to get that one under your belt. Yeah, um, obviously off pole I had to win it. Um, if I didn't I would have been chasing my tail all night. So yeah, I guess I got the easy one out of the way. I got around the first corner but um, yeah, we got now grid 14 and grid 26 so we're going to have to work really hard to get out of there and uh, try and make up some spaces. So Jason, you had a little bit of drama in that, uh, in that race. Can you just talk us through it? Yeah, about halfway through the race I lost all my brakes, so I kind of started slowing up. I had a bit of a lead, I was watching my mirror, um, and I thought I'd sit back from the pack, just so I didn't get tangled up with them, and then, yeah, my brakes went away, and, um, yeah, the boys are fixed it now, but, yeah, she was, she was a pretty nervous seven or so laps out there because, yeah, I had no brakes at all, and uh, I had a lap of spin up in front of me at one stage, and I was lucky to pull the car up and, and get around the inside of them. 
So tell me, uh, your pit crew jumped into action as soon as they come in. Have you made any adjustments for the next two races? Uh, we've chucked a couple of cold tyres on the back of it because uh, they get chewed out when they get hot. So a couple of cold ones um, and then, yeah, I guess from there we'll, we'll just adjust as the track uh, wants us to because it's, it's starting to get slick out there. We saw that in the last probably half of the race here. So, yeah, we'll tighten the car up, um, adjust the shocks and, and uh, hopefully we can keep the car going. Yeah, and you're talking about your shocks. The car looks totally different than what it did yesterday. So you made some adjustments before you got to the track tonight. Yeah, we found the car was leaning over yesterday, uh, and it was pretty noticeable. I think uh, it was really fast in the first race, but after that we struggled. So uh, we've we've uh, had a bit of a play with it today, and um, no, it's definitely going a lot better. So, yeah, there's a lot, lot to go yet, and uh, I got the hard work to do. So. Yeah, I just gotta hope luck's on my side and um, yeah, do my best to keep my nose clear and, and drive it as hard as I can. Well, I tell you what, Jason, you're 15 laps down, you're 30 uh, laps away from taking it home to the bay. Fingers crossed for you. Um, how are your mates doing, uh, like Randy T, doing up the way? I seen you go and have a quick chat with him. Yeah, uh, Quinn got caught up in that one by the looks of it. I saw him quite early in the race. Um, but it sounds like Randall went from about 20 to 5, so uh, yeah, he's going really well. But yeah, we're still a long way to go. Let's just focus on the next race, and then uh, once we get through that, then yeah, we'll see where we sit and see what we've got to do. Awesome. Good luck for the rest of the night, Jason. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Cheers. Thank you. It's action for the whole family. With 23 tracks around New Zealand, there is no better way to spend your weekends than at a Speedway New Zealand track. Here they come to the start-finish line again. There's something for the whole family. Spree cars, saloons, stock cars, sidecars, midgets and much, much more. Pack up the family and make a trip to adrenaline-filled, action-packed bashes and crashes that only Speedway can deliver. www.speedway.co.nz to find out the track nearest to you. Speedway, it's our summer thing. PTS Logistics, another big sponsor of us here at Paradise Valley, bringing us the Tier 2 Championship. Recap for you, opening heat, Thomas Stanaway, the 87B came home in first place. 9G, Jamie Hamilton was second, uh, third place. 85K, Jared Wade, then 166 Hayden Park and 118. Bryce Steiner wrapped up the top five. Uh, so the fields are thinning. There's a couple of those top finishes in front of the field. Yeah, seven or eight Sorry. empty grid spots there, Paul. Yeah, so. There so it's Hodge and Hart on the front row with three is empty. Four is Callum Flavel. Then Low and Gaskin. Then, so the PTS. Logistics, heat two. 12 laps and in the starter's hands. So Thomas stand away in the 87 quick as he can. Tried to get down onto the pole line. So all pretty clean through the opening one. Not so clean here as who's going to ride up that concrete wall? Oh, they're all out of it as Flavel gets spun around and that's. Caught up, Malwa, uh, heat one winner, Thomas Danaway. It's just kind of separated them into two bunches in the early part of this race. So here we go, Seth Hodge. Can he hold it together this time? In the number 21. Uh, sorry, Cody Hodge. It is in the 21. He turned 17 years old in about six weeks' time. Hold his nerve. He's got a former 1NZ right on his tail. That turn forced has kind of caught both of them out. So up the inside comes Hart and Gaskin. Three, four wide into turn one. Onto the brakes they go. Oh, down the main straight. Gaskin riding their concrete wall momentarily. Wow. You saw them. Did you, you could see the wheel come up the shot working hard. Oh, Thomas Stanaway gets turned around. Race one winner, and he's going to drop down the pack. But a quick recovery from the 87. Out front, Hart and Gaskin, as uh, the 98 of Callan Clark 
Vets dished up into the concrete wall, courtesy of Eulenberg. Lines reverse, gets those front wheels pointed back in the right direction. So Michael Rumney gets his head into the game in the uh, front of the field now. Jared Way slams into the side of him, tries to rub bumpers to help make his way around turn three and four. So it's still Hart from Gaskin, 166, Hayden Hart, third in the North Island Championships a few weeks ago. Michael Rumney in the 7R, just a little half spin in front of Jared Wade as they were battling there for second, uh, third place. Lamp sticking by, 7 gone. He's Hodge up the inside of Lowe. They're having a good little dig dog battle, those two P cars. As Yulenberg looks to get onto the scene, that's Brad, the 85, we've lost Blair tonight. After his diff issues in that runoff last night. The bonnet on the 722 is loose. Still staying on at the moment. So on referees will be keeping an eye on that. Jamie Hamilton in the nine, into two number. Three, he goes stand away. Oh, boy, I thought Brendan Beasy was going to have a launch it in the end. It'll be white flag this time around for Hart. Now, race leader. Mike Ranger, Thunderbird gets out of control, coming off turn two. And there's the white, one to go. Another one, six, six of Hayden Hart. Oh, we've got a, we had a big coming together. Stanaway's got caught up down there again. Blake Adamson involved. Tony Van Leesch out. Battles galore. This is the Tier 2 Championship. They're putting it all out there. Of course, at our World 240s event at Paradise Valley, which is just two and a half weeks away, by the way. Um, the Tier 2 Championship has plenty on the line. Tell you more about that soon. Confirming unofficial provisional top 10 Hayden Ha, Richard Gaskin, Jared Wade, Cody Hodge, and Michael Rumney round up to five. Uh, then Yulenberg, Steiner, Beasley, Hamilton, and Stanaway are the uh, top 10. And the points as they stand in the PTS Logistics Tier 2 Championship. Remember, provisional. We've got Hayden Hart on 49 points. Just one ahead of Jared Wade in the 85, then five back to Thomas Stanaway. Jamie Hamilton also on 43, Bryce Steiner and Brad Yulenberg, Richard Gaskin. Uh, they're all pretty tight in amongst uh, the top seven. Hi, Malcolm Nardo from Suck It Up. We specialise in hydro excavation in the Canterbury region, safe big methods around services. Also we do septic tank cleaning, Drain cleaning, CCTV over your pipes. If you want an excellent service, please check us out on Facebook. Suck It Up Limited, 740 Marston Road, Christchurch. Call them 24 hours a day on 027 588 8809. So I see William Humphreys, one of the, uh, the favourites going into this. Actually went backwards five spots in that one. Grid 7, finished 12th. He's got a grid 20 and a grid 14 to come, so still do plenty of passing. But um, yeah, heat one results in you, you go five spots backwards from your grid position. Not a good start for William Humphrey. So Rudra not being a, a happy hunting ground, I don't think, for William in recent times. But I'd say he's only dropped five spots, only dropped seven, grid 7 to 12th. But uh, when you look at the, the moves, plus 15 that some of those other guys made, and you've gone back five, you're actually 20 points off the pace yes. effectively from those other top chances. Um, we have had a uh, driver's license, not sure whether there's a wallet with it as well, but we're looking for Kahutia Te Ho. Kahutia Te Ho. Uh, we've got your driver's license and uh, at race control in the pits, so uh, you can come and collect that. Like I said, I'm not sure we will just be given that as ID for uh, any other bits and pieces. Uh, but you can have to race control. Right, uh, let's go round again with the uh, teams race, shall we? All to do a rascals and the Waikato Raiders. And uh, looks so Waikato 
have drawn pole position again. The eight of Larry Henderson sat out the opening race, uh, but he's out there for this one. He will be on pole. Outside will be Alex Jones. She started uh, outside of the front row for the first heat as well. On to row two, Mike Herbert for Rotorua on the inside. And then the 24 of Brad Philpott on the outside. Row three, Clinton Cheatham 361 for Huntley. And 58, Robbie Sisson for Rotorua. And then the back row, it is 735, Keegan Orr. And the 88 of Justin Hutchby. Again, this team race. 12 lap up and we're underway green flag drops and this time six cars move and a couple remain down the back a bit more strategic this time as Alex Jones is going to race away from Larry Henderson look at this at the moment Rotorua running first third and fourth as Mike Herbert keeps the but in and on Henderson puts himself into the concrete wall and Herbert's got a chance here to nail him takes him to the wall down the Hit straight, makes the pass. So Rotorua now running first and second. But a block car lies ahead as Alex Jones comes up, puts the bumper in. Can she keep the 24 car of Philpot busy? While Herbert can make a pass. Not the ideal spot to make a pass around the outside. This is giving Henderson the chance to close up. Here comes Henderson in the number eight. He's gonna go hard. And fast into the corner. Herbert in the 52. Gets it a little bit crossed up. Now Alex Jones. Oh, oh, oh man, oh, oh, she oh. got hammered. But Herbert gets through. Round the outside of his two Rotorua block cars. Now they will try and slow down the eight of Larry Henderson. So Alex Jones, man, she took a big hit down there into the concrete. She hasn't moved since. Now she has. She's found reverse. Backs it off the wall. Good to see. So down into turn. Race leader in turn three and four. As a couple of the Waikato cars have a dice there with Orr. But into turn, into the pit straight. And the race leader puts a big shot onto Justin Hutchby. Hutchby desperately tries to drive him to the grass, which means that Herbert would have to redress and drop in behind. He's running away now from Hutchby. He's trying to. Hutchby showed some good pace in that early heat. Here comes Hutchby in with the big shot on the back of Mike Herbert. Four laps. This is lap five. Into the concrete wall. Clinton Cheatham takes Robbie Sisson. This is busy down here on the pit straight. That was a big one. Alex <laughs> Jones, you could see Phil Pot. Yeah. You could see him lining up the race leader. And just as he was putting on the gas. He missed. Alex Jones pulled out on him. Wow, that was a biggie. So Alex Jones, look at the fireworks. We got pyrotechnics here tonight. But those are a different kind on the racetrack. That was Alex worth Jones. waiting to wait and watch. Boy, that was, uh, that was a biggie, <laughs> wasn't it? I'm off again. So, we're <laughs> just, just balanced, yes, just on the just corner sitting. of the bumper. <laughs> okay, so we've got a replay here. Uh, so there's Larry Henderson out of control. It's the car right at the back on the screen. So you can see Alex Jones on the inside there, the 28. And you can see him lining up here. Jones pulls out, clips him, bang. <laughs> wow. Ouch. That timing, eh? Timing is everything from, uh, from the opposite angle. So Jones... Pops out here, turns, ting, bang. Thank you very much. And that could change, that, I think that one move They're changed on the, the outcome of this team's race. They're on the grids. Oh. They're on the grids, just saying, just once. Ouch. Uh, so the 24 of oh, Brad Philpot out of this one uh, for Waikato. So Rotorua leading Mike Herbert in the 52 from Larry Henderson, then Clinton Cheatham, then Keegan Orr. Oh, he's okay. How are you? Yeah, it's, it's just focus. It's about what's going to happen forward. Uh, you walk around, you look at Ethan Reed. He's sitting there. He's probably one of the most relaxed drivers you'll see floating around. Arms outside the cabin, goggles beside him. Gives me a bit of a, a smile and a grin while looking forward. There's the 98M. Lost those tyres in the first one. He's sitting there. He's uh, just waiting. And uh, 
It is now. It's just waiting with anticipation. Steve uh, Hampton has just pulled the 66R in there behind Mitch Vickery. There's the 94 of Humphreys as well. Uh, Damien Orr's pulled into the back of the grid at this stage. The only car still sitting in there. We've got right. uh, Kerry Rimp, the 19M, hasn't moved out yet. He may have pulled out, I'm just wondering. All right, we are racing again. 52 is the race leader, Mike Herbert. Then it's the 8. But Herbert has lapped the number 8 car. Not sure why. So Larry Henderson... Look at this, he gets taken to the infield by Keegan Orr. They're locked together here, are they? Those two doing a little 19M is out. 19M is out. Okay, thank you for that update. So the eight car is in second place, and he's now two laps behind Mike Herbert. 52 is the race leader. Uh, we are four on three. Waikato down to three cars, uh, obviously after the Philpot car. Got taken to the infield. Alex Jones, look out. Oh! Cruncher! <laughs> Clinton Cheatham has got her. See, I said when you said Cruncher, it wasn't officially a hit. That was a good hit. <laughs> that was. Um, I thought it was a brave <laughs> it was a brave move in a team's race. The Mike Herbert. Oh, Keegan Orr into the side of Larry Henderson in the number eight. Lights go red. So we've got the bonnet of the 361 car lying on the track. And the rules state your car must have a bonnet. Uh, it is a safety requirement if all of a sudden... Just as well you don't have to have a side, Paul, because... Oh, yes. uh, is that the Sisson car? Yeah, I think, as long think as it is. Work. Yeah, it's uh, still there sort of hanging on, but it's not yeah. going to be there much longer, I okay. think. Okay, look at the uh, super screen uh, for this replay here. Look at Larry Henderson. He's going to back out. Now, remember, team's racing rules a bit different? Yeah. Bang. You're Attacking allowed to, position? You're allowed to do that yeah. in team's racing. You're not allowed to do it in normal racing. Um, but if the car is in an attacking position and could pull out on you, so look at this. He, he drives back. So in theory, he could yes. go forward to attack a car, even though he's stationary. Keegan Orr, allowed to give him that full noise hitting the side. Uh, and Henderson hasn't refired. So Sisson's able to just sit there. So no, that, oh, that's the Alex Jones car that's missing the side of the body. And the only car flying around is the 52 of Mike Herbert. And amongst that, we've thrown a checkered flag. I thought it was a 12 lapper, but no, it's only a 10. And Mike Herbert takes the win. Now Larry Henderson gets the car fired up. <laughs> and one apiece tonight for the Waikato Raiders and the Rotorua Rascals. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for both sides. A win apiece tonight here at TWS Paradise Valley Speedway. Very, very dejected. Kerry Remnant sitting in his trailer, not wanting to talk. Uh, just sitting there with his uh, on his haunches, hands on his, resting on his arms, just sitting on his phone and said, not now, Minty. So, uh, don't know what's happened there. I'll try and give you some reports when I can, but the car's missing from the grid at the moment. The 106H, the 591, and now the 19M will not take its place on the grid for Heat 2. Yeah, but sad that one, isn't it, Barry Brown? Mm. Because, you know, uh, it's been, uh, you know, the last time that Kerry Remnant qualified for the New Zealand Championships is back in 2006. So yes. it's been, been a long time uh, since he's been in the big dance for the New Zealand Championships. And I think, you know, sentimentally, a lot of people were, were really, really behind uh, Kerry Remnant tonight in this, in this very special year for him. Uh, as we, we've just seen some teams racing, but when it comes to the Superstock teams racing, mm. uh, he has done it all. And this year, notching up 25 years, it's a special season for him. I, I can only assume if he uh, honestly felt that he did cross the line, even though it was a fair way down in heat one, and uh, was given a DNF and zero points. Possibly he's just feeling a little bit dejected by that and uh, didn't want to come back out. But whether that is the case or whether there's more to it, um, certainly I'd noted him down as, as crossing the line as a finisher, but what I write down doesn't count for anything. Hi, I'm Brittany Carpenter, driver of 85 GM, based out of Greymouth. I use wholesale tyres, coloured chrome rims on my car. If you're looking for something unique and different on your car, contact Wholesale Tyres to get these coloured rims. Or get a hold of them on Facebook at Wholesale Tyres, or go onto their website, which is www.wholesaletires.net.nz. See you trackside. Need colour chrome rims? Wholesale Tyres. Good rims, better prices, great people. 
Wow, here we go. It's a bit cooler down here now, thank you. <laughs> That's all right, Mindy. Yes, what a night. Nice. You just sit up there in your two armchairs getting your shoulders massaged while I do all the work. It's all good. He's got a strange idea of what goes on, hasn't he, that chap? <laughs> got to say hello to Shay Oliver and Louise Oliver over in Tauranga as well. Shay B, uh, Shay B Road, Colonel Oliver. Just a speedway racer, sprint car racer, a really cool friend of mine. Right, let's take a look at the lineup. Peter Bengston and Ryan Hunt will be on the front row in the Nissans. Damien Orr, 81R on grid three. Quinn Ryan, grid four. Cody McKee, Wayne Hemi, missing, of course, from grid six. Then Randall Tarrant and Ethan Rees on row four. Dale Robertson, Mark Costello round out the front five rows. Shane Malsop on grid 11. Des Curry will be missing from grid number 12. He won't have the 106H car there. And then we go to grid 17, and it is the 54 of Paul Johnson. Uh, there we, we jump to grid 13, 72P, Simon Joblin. Jason Long, heat one winner of grid 14. Brett Nichols on 15, then it's Vickery uh, Johnson on grid 17 in the 54 and Steve Hampton outside him on grid 18. Prentice and Humphreys uh, take positions at 19 and 20. 21 is Keegan Levine, Kerry Remnant will be missing from grid 22. 23 is Jack Myers outside him, the 10G of Peter Rees and on the back row it's Hamish Booker and Asher Rees. That is your starting grid for heat number two. You commentate the race from the front, Paul. I'm going to watch the last couple of rows of okay. the grid for the uh, the first couple of laps and just see what happens, I think. Oh, fine. What should I do? Are you ready for a good time? We are here at TWS Paradise Valley Speedway, Heat 2. And Heat 2 is normally the one where it actually starts to take some sort of shape, it doesn't does. it? Hey, and Paul, um, Paul, was it worth the wait? Oh, yeah. You sure? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't a couple of days ago. I was thinking, no. do we really want this? I think it's worth the wait, eh? Isn't it awesome? So Great it's, crowd. And look at this, yeah, eh? Noisy, packed. vocal, speedway-loving crowd. And again, we've all we've all had the wait uh, through the rain and the delays. The drivers have as well. We've really felt it for them. We know what we've gone through as fans. But these guys, it's all about them. These 26. Well, we're down to 23. Let's see what happens in heat number two of the Technical Welding Services New Zealand Superstock Champs for 2021. Bengston and Hunt on the front row. Thanks to the Rotorua Stock Car Club and Technical Welding Services, this is heat number two. It is another 15 lapper. Watch your favourites closely. And. Full start. Oh, look out. Look out! False starts. We <laughs> talk about the anticipation. Uh, boy, these, I, I they've had it drilled into the driver's briefing, you know. No lights means no nothing. And, so, uh, okay, so the light's gone orange, so now they can effectively start moving again. Yes. Now, now what, what's, what would be the ruling here? So look at Brent Nichols, the 48 car. He's got some issues. He's pulled off. He was on grid 15. Yeah, Paul, I oh know he's moving now, that's good. He just got out of the road, he saw it was coming behind him and he pulled hard left to hope that he didn't get one up the backside like three or four cars did. Peter Rees with steering problems, issues for the Rees car. Yeah, he uh, he had a, a big run going up the outside, I didn't see who the who he hit the back of down here, but um, to my way of thinking, there should be some uh, time to look at well, that. Broken the gear stick off. It's busted oh. the gear oh. stick off the top of the gearbox. He had his hand on it when he took the hit. He was looking down, he gunned it, and straight in the back of the car, he has broken the gear stick off. Well, we know so, one of the things well, is going to be happening in Heat 3 now, I suspect. We do, and, and, and that, Right now, before heat two starts, that greatly increases the chance of a one, two, six, or a one, two, six. He's going to ask for three minutes. Rees is going to go and ask for three minutes. He reckons they can do it. His crew better be running. They're looking for a gear stick for the 10G. If his crew's not running, he's asking for three minutes. Here comes the tension. Now, okay, so uh, I, I, should he be allowed the three minutes? I, I say yes. I say yes because the front row took off when the lights weren't green. And, and the race hasn't started, yeah. has it? 
the race has not started. So this this will be the initial debate down here now with the officials, is whether or not the three minutes can the, the three minute break had happened. The, so the crew are here. They're running down. Yeah. They're getting the bits. They're on their way. Yeah. This is time. The time taken waiting for them to come yep, is helping go. Peter Rees. Yep, they're allowed over the gate. Here so we the come. Three minutes is on. <laughs> Here we go. Here's another twist. He, he was he was hanging on the gear stick, and when he had the hit, his hand hit the gear stick so hard it just broke it off. Isn't yep. that where you just put a crescent on it or something? Well, something. You've got to find a gear. Now, whether or not they can lock it in second gear, mid-pack, he can get the big push off from the rest of the cars. He may be enough to get a yeah, run he's, on. He's actually right down the back, uh, Minty. He'd but, made a lot of ground somehow. He, he found a gap through a lot of the field before he hit somebody. Yeah, he did. So we'll wander over here. We're under yellow. They'll allow me to walk over there and have a look. Heads inside. Here comes some parts. Yeah, grid 24. Here, here is the gear stick. What are we putting on it? Of course, their, their, uh, their pity area kind of way down towards the back of the pity area, aren't they? i tell you what we're going to do. They can't fix the gear stick, but I'm saying that they're probably going to lock this in second gear. And they're going to allow him to try and slip the clutch and get away. He'll be slow off the start, off the back, which will be a good thing for him. Well, and if he can get mobile, like he has now, and get it in second gear, here comes the rest of the crew. Gear sticks and parts are coming in. They've ripped bits out. Here we go. It's, it's Jamie like, Hamilton yeah, there. Jamie do, Hamilton's down there. Doing all the hard work, mind you. He's yep. that small. He can jump in the cabin <laughs> and uh, do the work, I suspect. Now, so of course, this is going to be a little bit of an issue here, like you say. One minute, yeah. ten seconds. <laughs> like you say, with a with little bit slower off the start, he's got uh, he's got his son right up behind He's mobile. Him. They've locked it in second gear, and he's going to go. Okay, there's your got, answer. Got, uh, so, so let's just see here. Peter Reeves will start on 24. It's Asher Reeves on right 26. Him. Yeah. Um, so obviously, Ash is going to have to help him off the the start, uh, which may just slow Asher up a wee bit. But we know how quick he is anyway. Yeah. Um, and that and that that little delay down the back might just open up a to an, an extra opportunity to dive down low into turn one and two. Can Reeves get a start without the car the uh, track areas? Yes, he Listen, can. he's slipping the crap out of that clutch. Sorry. I shouldn't say that, but that's the only way you're going to get it going. <laughs> that's a technical term, isn't yeah. it, Mindy? Well, it's a triple plate, triple plate clutch, and it's a race clutch, so they're very aggressive. So you've got to slip them to get them going, which is what he's doing. So he's done that, but he's, I would say he's locked it in second gear, and if he gets stopped or spun up, it's going to make a challenge for him to get her going. Just adds a bit more tension to heat, too. So you know, I think, you know, but a bit of discussion going on about whether that was allowed, the officials made the decision to open the gate, so that can't be. The officials are happy with that decision, so yep. So there's nobody, and so the, the grid is empty in front of Rees as well. Uh, that's where Kerry Remnant was supposed to be on grid 22. All right, let's try this again. It is take two, race two, night two of the New Zealand Superstock Championship. In the starters' hands, let's go racing! Yeah, Ash start, started, gave him a bump, and off Pete went. Oh, he's oh. Got, right up, Mark Costello. He's up high. He's over the top of Shane Malsop. And Malsop, can he get the 71 car fired up? Yes, he can. Wide. Round goes Keegan Levine. Steve Hampton makes some big moves. Jack Myers makes some big moves around the outside through turn one and two for the first time. Randy two from oh, Grits. Oh, massive roll over Dale Robinson. Dale Robinson. Whoa. Wow! Damien Orr is upside down. Oh, it's he Damien caught, Orr. He caught the front of the 72, Cody McKee, and he did the William Humphreys. He rode across the front. The thump, front bumper dug in. Don't run down there, please, people. Yeah, it please. caught the front, and over he went the top of McKee, 72. Please do stay back from the fence, uh, ladies and gentlemen. There's uh, fuel. This uh, it could go up here, so please do stay back. Let the crash crews do their job. Please keep your kids off that fence alongside the Damien Orr car. That was massive. So, so uh, I know some people may be waiting on the replays. We are just making sure that Damien Orr's okay. He's, he's climbing, climbing out. out. Oh, and he's first throw. He's Give pumped. Him a... <laughs> he's pumped. <laughs> Give him a cheer, ladies and gentlemen. What a ride for the Rotorua stock car star, Damien Orr. <laughs> 71 PM Melsop, the whole right oh. front wheel's ripped off that. And 
and he's just he's just given a high five to Graham Hughes, our official photographer here from Sports Beat Photography. You got to check out Facebook. Those photos from Graham Hughes are amazing. I think we are going to go to some replays uh, on the big screen as they get that car righted. So okay, here we go. So there's Damien Orr, the 81, the black and purple car. Oh, something's on the track. So there. It's Melsop's front wheelie hit. Oh, the, the right front of Melsop's, I think, is gone. And is that what he hit? I'd say it must be because, yeah, Melsop's yeah. on the so infield. Melsop's on. Oh, and, and McKee hits it first. Yes. Yeah, McKee hits it. And of course, the, the looking at the front of Melsop's car, it's lost the wheel, the yes. stub, the brake disc. Everything's been ripped clean off that car from that hit down there coming out of corner two. Yep. And then McKee's hit that, and Orr's had nowhere to go, and that tyre has just launched him into oblivion. So the, the fact the tyre was lying down, it, it just everybody's missed it, yes. I think. Nobody's seen it there. Oh, wow. So it's the tyre, it's the, the front right off the 71 car of Shane Malsop. So he's parked up on the infield. He's the one who got spat out. Uh, or he, who was riding over the top of him? Uh, Mark Costello. Yes, yes. Cost, in, in the, in coming off turn two, in the opening lap, Mark Costello was riding up high over the concrete wall, uh, over the top of Malsop, uh, and then Malsop uh, and managed to get it refired. Yeah. At reverse. Back. Demo, so, are we good? We'll come. Yeah, good oh. as gold, mate. I'll come over for a yarn. Okay, you come over for a yarn, <laughs> eh? Hey, uh, tire on the road, nowhere to go. Shit, wasn't it like a roller coaster? <laughs> yeah, it was a bit, just saying. <laughs> I opened my eyes at one stage and all I could see was the dirt, so that was the end of that. <laughs> what do you do when you open your eyes and all you see is the dirt? Close them again? Uh, I thought the missus had me out gardening, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you said the first the first heat everyone was beat, beating you up and picking on you. You've come out in the second heat, then you bloody hell. Uh, there was a tyre on, the, on the track and 72 went over at first and I seen it and I sort of thought, oh well, I'm launching too, so that was take off. So the tyre just picked your front up and just launched you straight up the wall didn't it? Yeah just straight up and over Minty and straight down on that nose I think and that's when over my eyes and nah, couldn't see any daisies there. <laughs> Did you plant a couple of spuds while you're there? Oh, I had an opportunity to I tell you. <laughs> Mate I'm just glad you were right because that was a biggie. Nah, awesome ass, cheers. Car going to be right for third heat? Oh, I think I'll just park it up. <laughs> <laughs> Damien Orr, what a good, does it get any better than that Paul? That's classic. Put your hands serious. together again, ladies and gentlemen. Damien Interviewer Orr. of the year. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so now we've got a bit of uh, sorting out to do. And just cars. before that happened, I was just about to point out and Randy T had gone from up. grid seven back to last. Damien actually wants a cheer from the crowd for that. Can you give him a cheer? Come on, he needs a bit of love right now. Damien Orr needs a bit of love. There you go. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> classic. So, did I see Pete? Oh, no. I saw a tractor parked by Peter Reese. I thought they were towing him off, but uh, no, Pete's still right. about to restart by now, the looks of it. Of course, now, this time, though, he's not going to have any push, no. is he? From the back. But, yeah, Randy T, his best grit, back to last. And King and all got spun around as well, so here we go, back into it. End of the second lap, Peter Bengston is your race leader. Then we've got Ethan Reese. And here we go, no. Peter. Oh, oh, straight, here we go. The Reeves show, show is about to begin. I think he might have problems, Paul. I'm not sure that he's uh, actually waiting. I think he's struggling to keep it going. He, he's on the grass. Yeah, I think you're right. But, uh, okay, we're gonna, we'll go red here, I think, for Reeves. Oh, no, now he's mobile again. Yeah, he, he was just sitting, he was waiting. He was looking for who's sitting where, I reckon. Now he's underway. So Keegan Levine making a, a pass, but he is a lap down. He's got Hampton. McKee's oh. just put Hampton over. Steve Hampton's been drilled by McKee. And up the wall. McKee picked him up going into corner one, took him right through corner two, put him up the wall as he came out of corner two. I'm surprised that McKee car's even going. Dale Robertson got collected here and uh, going into turn one under the red light as well. Well, it may have been as the red light was activated, but uh, he was going up the wall just before turn one. So Steve Hampton, second place in the opening heat. I did, you know, McKee, obviously he took a wild ride as well, not yes. as big as Damien Orr's. And I did notice him just kind of, just cruising around. Um, I, I wasn't expecting him to pick up the 66 car <laughs> of Hampton. Pete, Pete Reeves, the gearbox has now failed. The gearbox completely has failed. 
All right, so the 10G is out. The 66 will be out as well. Uh, so um, so we took look at the leaders over there. Peter Bengston, uh, the 58, is our race leader. The white car just down onto the main straight is the race leader. Just in behind him, the 127 of Ethan Rees. Then we go to the 46B of Quinn Ryan, who is over there as well. Now the next of the cars is the orange five of Keegan Levine. Now Levine is a, is a lap down. Uh, so he's out of it at the moment. Uh, then we go to William Humphreys uh, is the next one on that list. It's the a front. big mover so far, the 126K from the back. He looks like he's beside uh, Dale Robinson right in front of the clubhouse, just in front yeah. of Jack Myers. Asher he, Reeves. He's made a heap. Grid 9. Grid 9 at the moment from 26. So he is Play, up. Place 9. Uh, what yes. is oh, sorry, ninth yeah. place. Yep. Yeah, from grid 26. And yes. we're only five laps into it. And he started slow to give his dad a push. Yes. So, um, only superficial on the Orca. <laughs> <laughs> but this was the race Asher had to make the big moves on. He didn't make a lot in heat one. So I tell you what, uh, to those of you who are in the stands and you like me and you live here in Rotorua and we're hoping for some good results tonight. That's the disappointing part now. We've seen our two Rotorua cars, <laughs> Damien Orr and Steve Hampton, both uh, out of the running in the championship, both in pretty spectacular fashion. From an overall spectacle point of view, I'm not all that happy about it, but that's the <laughs> way it goes. That is uh, super stock racing. So Steve Hampton just uh, being checked over there by our Lakes Medics. Uh, so where's team. the one NZ sitting at the moment, Paul? Uh, so he's down in 16th place. Yeah, from grid seven. So he's made a bit of ground again, helped by uh, all these other cars falling over each other, obviously. But uh, yeah, big backwards move in that heat. So on McKee coming to the infield. No, he's, uh, oh, just being repositioned. Okay. Just taking well, the scenic route. Well, hold it. Oh, no, well, he's got to go back into uh, where he was. Yes. Yeah. He's just taking a long way around, isn't he? I mean, yeah, he was under Hampton, so he's got to he's go, back to, got to, go back to where he was. Yep. So there, there's a statement as well, isn't it? We've seen how, how quick this uh, kid is in the, in the <laughs> super stocks and now <laughs> making a pretty big statement and uh, using the bumper. Yes, uh, the vast majority of New Zealand wouldn't have heard of him before uh, this weekend, Paul, or, or this week, I should say. I've just recovered the abandoned tyre from Melsop's car. I've just sent you the photo, Paul. You have a look at that. No wonder it launched uh, Damien Orr. <laughs> so, still, like, just, like I say, just five laps gone. A few big moves. And we've got three or four drivers already starting to build. Uh, an impressive points lead. One of them was... Steve Hampton. Just having a look problems down here. Dale Robinson. Problems, Dale yeah. Robinson with problems. He's uh, working that car off the track on his clutch. Trying to, he's trying to clutch start it. It's stalled on the track and he's asking for a push. Oh, Robinson wow. is out. And I say I thought he did. He was either going up the wall as the red light came on or he got collected under the red. Not quite sure. Steve Hampton, you right? Yeah, my good mate. What caused that? Uh, not sure. It was a North Island car, upper North Island car. I'm not quite sure. Well, there's not many South Island cars in the final, <laughs> so you can't really call that one. Yeah, well, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, well, paybacks will come. You all right, mate? Yeah, I'm all good. Car just up the wall, just couldn't get down. Is that the problem? What's that? Once it went up the wall, you couldn't get it down? Nah, we lost drive on the right rear, so left rear was stuck in there and the right rear was spinning, so... That'll do it, eh? Yeah, that's it. Nice, Not nice to see you on here, but uh, well done, first heat. Let's hope you get back out. All right, mate. Cheers, eh? All right, here we go. Race leader 58, Peter Bengston. On the main straight, we go green. Let's go racing. Good start from Quinn Ryan. Trying to quickly get on the back bumper of Rees. As they settle now into a rhythm. Here at Paradise Valley Speedway. Sparks flying from the 126 of Asher Rees. He just runs it a wee bit wide off the main straight. So it's hard and fast in this one right now as Humphrey's up the inside of McKee. So remember, uh, the five is a lap down. Making passes right now is tough as they all settle into their rhythm and spread around the racetrack. Rees 
Ryan, uh, sorry, Bingston, Ryan and Rees. At the front, oh, Ryan Hunt gets out of control. Just gets it wrong, coming off turn four. Into the side of Josh Previs. So the 5G car had to take some evasive action in that one. Jack Meyer starting to make some moves now. As Prentice gets onto his back bumper, pushes it wide, makes the pass. Simon Joblin starting to make some moves here as well, but Joblin started on grid 13, only up to grid 9. They're starting to put... Oh, a huge Ooh. shot on, uh, <laughs> on Joblin. That was Mitch Vickery. He just punched him out of the way. Joblin, will he come back for seconds? Return the favour. That was a big shot. Vickery again tries the shot on Hunt. Gets it wrong this time though, Vickery. And he's going to lose two. Out front still Peter Bengston. Quinn Ryan runs wide. So that lets Ethan Rees back up into second spot. 13 laps gone, the white flag on the way. Fifty-four on the infield. So there's the white flag one to go for the 58p of Peter Bengston. Or the 82 of Look, it didn't sound very good as it went past, but the chicken flag falls. Peter Bengston will take the race win. Jason Long with about three passes well, in that Reeves last lap. In second spot, Quinn Ryan in third. William Humphreys fourth, Asher Rees, Jack Myers, Josh Prentice, Simon Joblin, Jason Long and Mitch Vickery round out the top ten. Then Ryan Hunt, Brett Nichols, Mark Costello. The one NZ to Randall Tarrant, 82S Hayden, uh, Hamish Booker. 5W Keegan Levine now only finishes you can see on, in that one. Sorry, Minty. You can see on the front of the 72A where that tyre went underneath the bumper and it's ripped off the bar. You know there's a bar underneath the bumper? It's ripped that off and bent that up into the car. So uh, it's hit that tyre real hard. And I don't know if you've seen that photo I just tagged you on Facebook. It's a pretty vicious photo of what's not left of a tyre. But, uh, yeah, Damien Orr's car's not too bad. I, I, didn't, I didn't mean that when I said before that it's superficial. It really isn't too bad. The roll cage looks okay. It's all been on the bumper, so everything else, I don't know, he may just turn around and have a crack. Dale Robinson fired his car up and just zoomed into the pits. So let's go find out what's broken, eh, and try and be of use to you. All right, let's uh, check those points out unofficially. Uh, at this stage, overall, you've got Ethan Rees on 46, Jason Long on 44, Asher Rees and Peter Bengston 42, Mitch Vickery on 41, Jack Myers on 40. They are your top six. Uh, now Barry's crunching the numbers, as he does uh, every time, and uh, we will look at those in a moment, get his info on the biggest movers. Then, of course, we've got the, the points, but then we need to look at where they're starting in their final heat. Welcome to Expat Cars, Southland's multi-award winning pre-owned dealership. Stock us of classic collectibles, V8s, family vehicles, trade vehicles and everything in between. Thinking American or Aussie muscle, family vehicle or custom, think 
X Factor Cars. This is the 15 of Carl Pegg on pole position for this one. Nick Davey outside him, who was a very fast finisher in that opening heat behind the 94 of Dale Stewart. Of course, acknowledging our sponsors, of course, TWS. What is this about all these letters? TWS, PTS, <laughs> we've got the PG Hydraulics. Classic builders, oh, there's one that's uh, outside the rest of it. Thanks to them for their support. We're underway, green flag drops. No, red. Another false start, was it? I'll come around and grid up again this 10 car field. Here we go, this time around. The PG Hydraulics Championship event. Oh, rock tie in the 599, but hard and fast down into turn three. Problems for Hunter. He spins it up in four. Gets it back pointing the right way now. Oh, Craig Chatfield right up over the grass and he's going to fire the 741 backwards as he gets onto that slipperiness of the pole line. Logan Nicholson maybe a full 360 in the 33. So out front, Carl Pegg, your race leader from Nick Davey and Dale Stewart. Hunter pulls to the infield. So it's the 15, who is your race leader? White car down the main straight. A few sparks there from Nick Davey, the 26P. Tries to make the pass on Stefan Roygaard. This forces the 58 PY. Up the inside he goes. Leads away by a couple of car lengths. Carl Southern puts the bumper into 58 as well. So Carl Pegg, your leader. Nick Davey. In second place again. He was runner up in the first heat. Now he takes the lead. Oh, and Carl Pegg issues for the former race leader as he runs it real wide down in turn two. So here we go, it's the same two cars that were battling in uh, heat one, but inverted positions. Seven gone. Sutherland maybe. A little bit of a dice. The 911 and 33. But it's 24 and 94, followed by 599 on time. Just half a second separating these two at the front. As Dale Stewart gets up real close. Nine laps gone now. It's a 12 lapper in the PG Hydraulics Championship. There's Dale Stewart biding his time as he's waiting. Nick Davey running a good race out front though. Nick Davey just seems to have a bit of an advantage in uh, turns one and two, whereas Stewart picks him up through three and four of those. Stewart's just eased off the 94 and he's pulling off. He's got some issues, Stewart. What's he, he's adjusting his mirrors. Is he really going on? The, he was running. He won the first heat. No, now he's pulling off. Okay. <laughs> he's starting to wonder. He might have just been uh, adjusting his mirrors to, to comb his hair in case Mindy comes to interview him. So he's going to DNF there.
So, right as they wind down, Barry, uh, you've done all the analysis now. Um, and uh, what, have, what have you come up with? What have you spotted? What are the highlights for you statistically in, in Heat 2? Uh, well, it was Ash Reese in that one, 26 to 5th. We said that's where, uh, I mean, you, you basically fell from his good 26. Yep. He had to get it up through around that 5th or 6th mark. Did that. Um, we'll wait for the official results because I've got one car one point different to what came up on our screen before. So, as we found last night, sometimes there was a late change in Heat 1 or something like that. But, all right, looking at our top six at the moment, Ethan Reese. 127 G, 46 points, grid 11 in the last heat, so he's done a lot of passing. 41 B, Jason Long, two points behind on 44, all the way back on grid 26, so Jason Long still a lot of work to do. Third equal by my points, 126 K, Asher Rees, 42 points, grid two. Wow. And uh, 58 P, Peter Bengston, also on 42, but grid 25. Then we've got Mitch Vickery, 26. I think he came out on the screen, he had 42 points. I add up his points to be 41. He's way back on grid 22. And Jack Myers, still up there in contention, 40 points, but grid A. Okay, so you mentioned uh, Peter Bingston in the 58P in the top six. That's what we always look at. We're going to come back and analyse that in a moment. Yes. But let's go down to the pits. And Bianca is with Heat 2 winner, Peter Bingston. Joining me is Race 2 winner, Peter Bingston. Woo, you're quick, mate. Yeah, we uh, we had to do it. Uh, starting off pole, we had to win it. So um, yeah, we made it count. Now you said to me uh, that turn three and four is slicking off pretty quickly. Yeah, it is. Uh, mid track is slicking off quite hard, but hopefully the night will bring it back. It always does at Rotorua, so I'm hoping it is. Turn one and two are mint, like unbelievable. But it's making it interesting down there. There's getting a bit of tangle ups and stuff like that. But we drove around it. We've done well. So there was a few stops in that race. Uh, tell me, how do you cope with that? Like you kind of stop and go reset? Um, yeah, yeah, take a little breather for a bit, but uh, yeah, you just got to get your mind back into it blooming quick, and, and uh, that's a hard thing. Don't lose focus, and you know, because it's upset your next corner entry, and uh, but you don't think it would, but it does, and, and uh, but no, hey, it's what it is, and uh, get going. But they're watching me on my start, so uh, I've got to make sure I don't creep too much. So is, has that been an issue over this weekend, Peter? Um, they got me up last night just to pull it up on it, and uh, but hey, we're trying our best and doing the best, but when you get so hot in there, she's making it interesting. So it's also a mind game as well as a horsepower game at the minute, isn't it? It's more mind than horsepower, like when it slicks off like that, we're only half throttle, or if you're lucky, even half throttle, you know, and you've got to drive to survive. Otherwise, uh, yeah, you just got to work it out and, and make ground when you can. Uh, what grid position are you coming off in your last race? Uh, 26, so I've got to do a whole lot of work, eh? But saying that, we're probably in top six or top seven, so we're doing all right. Uh, I'm happy there, and uh, what comes of it comes of it. I'm, I'm, uh, I've been around a long time, so nothing phases me now. Listen, I tell you what, you've got a massive smile on your face. You're, you're really enjoying it here tonight, aren't you? Oh, Rotorua. It's Rotorua. Yeah, it's great. You can't get any better venue for Speedway for stock cars, you know, it's great. Awesome. We wish you all the best for your final race. You've got a lot of hard work to do. I'll let you go and get ready. Thank you very much, Peter. OK, thanks. The St Nicholas is a familiar sight around Bluff as she steams out to capture Can Do Fishing's famous Bluff Kinner. Once caught, the kinner is brought back to the purpose-built factory in Bluff where it is processed, packed and shipped fresh to you. But that's not all that Can Do Fishing can do for you. Try some of their green bone fish or delicious power products and you will soon see why seafood from the Bluff is world famous. So head to your local fish market or supermarket and ask for Can Do Fishing Kinner, Fish or Power. Can Do Fishing, there's nothing we can't do for you. Yeah, so Peter Bengston mentioning there, he thinks he's in the top six or seven. Well, you know, according to our numbers, yes, he is. Uh, we've got the official results through for Heat 2. Uh, we've got to give those a few more minutes to clear. Uh, then we'll be able to give those to you, hopefully, straight after this race. Peter Bengston, he mentioned there as well that he's been around a long time. He is on a bit of a streak. Uh, he did eight in a row. Uh, sorry, seven New Zealand Championship finals in a row from 2012 through to 2018. And then he missed two events the last two years. But it's not that he missed, missed the finals. He didn't even go to the events. So if you take those out of the equation, then he qualified again for tonight. Uh, and this year's event effectively makes him eight in a row of events that he has entered for this New Zealand Championship. Peter Beeston, he's been a two NZ. 
You there, Paul? Yeah. Minty. Downstairs with uh, the referees, um, hold all bets at the moment. I'm just waiting to get an update from Rod. There's deep, meaningful discussions going on inside the referees' box at the moment. Damage from down there, the 1NZ Randall Tarrant. No idea why it stopped and stalled. It came into the pits, it started up, it's running fine, and they've got no idea. 26K, has got a misfire. Where do we go next? 89W stalled, on, and as I said, it didn't restart. And what's happened, it start, started in the middle, they've got no idea. Um, 48N, it's not firing on all the cylinders at the moment. They're trying to figure out why there it's carburation or ignition. 72A, left front suspension, they're doing a front bar, a front beam, inside and outside tyre it ends. 54S has no oil pressure. 71P needs a new front beam and a complete right front end. I doubt they're going to get that done for heat three. 66R, left front shocks, left rear shocks and suspension damage. 81R is out. 72P, nothing too major, a tidy check over. 10G, they're in the middle of a full gearbox change. 5G, OK. 98M has have got major issues on the left rear suspension, left rear tyres and a couple other things. Here comes Rod. I'm getting an update from him. Back to you in a minute. Thank you very much, Minty. Uh, so, yeah, like we say, and I don't know why uh, Barry had his ears on there, but it's, uh, yep, so we're holding all bets at the moment. There was one car there, must have been missing off the ELS. I found where the one point's gone, oh, I was one point different on a whole heap of cars, but it is because uh, somebody that finished up pretty high obviously must have dropped off the ELS and has been inserted. Everybody else gone down a point, but uh, yeah. Nothing from the referees. So they're happy? They're happy, absolutely very happy. They did a lot of discussion about a couple of things. Totally happy. Back to you. All right, here we go. The Face of Builders Limited Tier 3 Championship. And this is to decide it. As they head around into turn one and two, and it's Rebecca Barr who leads them around. And she is the up there on points, Matt Nielsen on 42, Rebecca Barr and Ethan Levine both on 41. So they're the drivers to be watching. Although Phil Ogle sits on 40 as well. Rebecca Barr leads, Levine moves up into third. Just it wide though in the 46 car. He's going hard, Ethan Levine. Rebecca Barr though, leading comfortably at the moment in the 34P. The green machine as she pulls away slowly. 147, Mac Nielsen running back in about ninth place. Oh, riding the wall again, Dan Pollock. And into the pit gate wall, uh, the pit wall, straight wall. Oh, and Hodge had a poke at the 85 as he went up the inside. So it's still Barr from Mickelson. Kahui Levine. So this is the tier three championship. Owen Levine gets taken out wide. He drops a whole lot of spots. Williams, oh, launches into turn number three. And I think Pickard might have been having deja vu thoughts from last night. As that wall loomed up large on the 307. The Pollock Hodge show continues. These two have been battling throughout this Classic Builders Limited Tier 3 Championship. So at right at the moment, Barr on 67, Nielsen on 65. Then we've got a three-way tie at the moment on 59 points. Still plenty to unfold. There we go, Levine picks up a point as he moves up the inside of Kieran O'Brien, who then gives him a tap and a tag. So still no issues out front, one, two, three. They've got to come forward. Man, there's some big battles going on, big pack. As these guys and gals swap paint, rub side rails, and race hard. Do this battle here, Axton's in there. Robbie Morris, the 85 of Dan Pollock, and the Seth Hodge 12 feet hand dipping, battling all night on. Round goes the 95 in front of race control. So the laps are ticking by. Barr, Kahui, Mickelson. Still the race leaders. Josh Kahui. Sitting in second spot. Phil Ogle. 
has got himself on the podium at the moment. There he is, the 282. He can't afford to lose any time. Oh, Kahui gets caught up down the pit straight. Lights are red. We're going to have a minute, minute or two before those results come from race two. We just found an error downstairs, so uh, they'll be updating that for you very shortly, Paul, but there's an error in the initial results I've seen. Okay, then that might be the one you picked I, up. I, I wonder in that case, yeah, whether all those cars that I've been dropping back in place, <laughs> um, based on our, our printout, may, may all go back up one. And it was somewhere yeah, they will up. Do. They will do. Somebody was a lap down from what I can see and what I can tell and what I sort of know and you know. That's all right, we'll fix that. God, I trusted the ELS off my own lap scoring and uh, <laughs> I might have made a mistake there. Okay, so the race leader, still the green number 34. Then we go back to the 185 of uh, Mickelson because Kahui's got issues as he. Uh, Dances around the concrete wall in turn four with a flat right front. Same issue, I think, for the Picard car. No, it's a left rear. And the flag drops. And Rebecca Barr takes the win in the race and unofficially the championship on 67 points. One point ahead of Matt Nielsen, who's come home third in that heat. He's on 66. And then we just look a bit further back, and I think it might be Ethan Levine uh, on 59 to round out the podium. I uh, know Mickelson is there in third place, the 185. Uh, it's second place in the race. So it's those three. It's Barr, Nielsen, Mickelson unofficially. We see that on the just uh, outside the Joblin car, if we can, Paul, yep. uh, doing a bit of work on the left uh, right rear of that car, adjusting this and trying to fix the shock mount on the right rear. That's almost been knocked off, so a bit of work going on the right rear of the Joblin car. How's the Peter Reese car going uh, down there, Mindy? They've got a gear That's stick my next in there. stop. That's my next stop. Give me a break, Brownie. Okay. I'm not that right. fast. Thank you. Thank you. So. Just to let you know, we've uh, just made an adjustment to the program. Uh, so we are now going to move to the Tier 2 Championship next, then back to the Tier 4, and then the final heat of the Championship. Mitch. Gearbox is back in the Rees car. Gearbox is back in the Rees car. We're working in OK. Gas going in the back of the 127. Uh, so Pete needs to be out there if these boys are going to have any chance of getting on. So whether it's a perfect gearbox or not, I don't know, but it's back in. They are running three Rees, and Prentice will be back on track. This good-looking Melsop bloke's done me a damage. He's actually put the wheel on, made it look like it's all good, but he's looking at me and saying, we're just bluffing him, into At this stage, <laughs> the 71P is out. I uh, will just confirm that with him. Uh, Mr Melsop, how are you? It's def definitely out and gone. Yeah, it's damaged all the front suspension mounts and all that. So, yeah, unfortunately, we won't be out. Unlucky mate, nice to have you out here. Awesome, hey, thanks for the Rotorua Speedway. It's been one hard weekend for them, but it's been one hell of an event and proud to be here in the top 26 and uh, let's go watch this final heat three. It should be a goodie. Be a team's race, won't it? Oh, I don't know, there's a lot of uh, chassis and engines and there's- It's a team's race. It's all sorts of deals going on. <laughs> I like that, that's uh, Shane Malsop. Okay, 54 S's in doubt. Still can't find why we've got no oil pressure. Let's dip around to the 72A. How are these Auckland boys going? Well, they're going pretty damn well at the moment because the front end's in. There is a Crescent's undoing some bent arms. They're going to make it back out. The 72A is going to be back on track. They're doing the Jamie Hemi that he did last night. These guys are busting a new baller and they are going for it. All right, so let's quickly turn our attention to the PTS Championship Tier 2 and how it shapes up after two heats as they make their way up for the final. We've got Jared Wade, who is pulling up on pole. He's right in the mix. But leading the way is the 166 of Hayden Hart, 49 points, but starts on grid 25, so right down the back. One point behind, Jared Wade, who was on 48 points, so box seat, really. Uh, and then we go back to a handful of drivers on 42, Brad Eulenberg, 42 points, grid 22, Jamie Hamilton, 42 points, grid 8. 
Um, and also on 42, Thomas Stanaway starting on grid 20. So again, just uh, waiting on those results. They know the issue, so it's just a case yeah. now of, of making them efficient. So we know, we know it's going to change slightly. Basically what I've done, which really emphasises the passing yep. and how important it is, um, I've gone through and taken their subtotals from two heats and added their points if they finished in yeah, their good are. position yep. order. Now, Asher Reese would finish up with grid two, second place, 67 points. Yep. You know, you'd think he'd get at least there. Yes. Jason Long, who's back on good 26, to beat 67 points um, with 43 at the moment, needs 25. So he needs to get from grid 26 to second, second if Asher finishes right up the front. You there, Paul? Yes, go, Mindy. Just been down with Dale Robinson. He said, well, all oh, it got a bit hot, got a bit overheated. He said, before that, when it hit the wall, he said, uh, I was hanging on to the steering wheel and it wasn't attached to the car. So I had to put that back on. And <laughs> that's what I saw. On racing. <laughs> yeah, that's always hard, isn't it? He said it didn't turn because it was in my hands and connected to nothing. <laughs> and I've got to ask them this question. Now we're going to do this. Dale Robinson, how's the air steering on your car? Yeah, not good when it comes off in your hands, is it? <laughs> What did you do to get it back on? A bit of panic? Oh, yeah, hey, there's only one person to blame. It was me. I obviously didn't clip it in properly when we went out there, and, yeah, silly mistakes like that cost you. <laughs> Mate, well done. See you in the last one. Yeah, cheers. So, PTS Championship, Heat 2. Round goes Hodge, but it's way running Hamilton at the front of this third heat. So, remember, Jared Way, one point off the lead in the championship, and starting right at the front compared with Oh, Broom and Broom and the nine bounces up the concrete wall. Couple running wide, down into turn four. Oh, turn four, massive shot, Callum Clark. Boy, you just line him up. It's, maybe that might be payback from uh, from an earlier race. Eulenberg put a big shot on uh, Callum Clark in heat two, I think it was. And now Clark's just lined him up and just absolutely punished him. And a turn four. Oh, oh my God, the bumper's just fallen off. <laughs> he's just run, over, just his run over his own bumper. He's just run over his own bumper. You don't see that every day. That, that car is wrecked at the front end of Callan Clark. The bumper's underneath the car. Wow. So we'll see the state of Eulenberg's car. Boy, he launched. It was a biggie. Uh, so yeah, that, that's interesting, Barry. What you've done there with with the amount of with, with those additional uh, working down. Yeah. So I mean, you, you look at what the passing done so far, and just if the grid stayed the same order, Asher Reese would be on 66, Ethan Reese on 62, next best, 88p, Jack Myers on 58. So that's how far at the moment Asher and Ethan are. Ethan are from the passes they've made yep. from their heats to date. Okay, we've got a replay here. So here's Eulenberg, wide Callan Clark just comes in, lines him up, bang, into the wall. Here we go, underway. So this is for the lead down into one and two. Wade Rubney Hamilton. So Jamie Hamilton, 42 points going into this one, six points behind Wade. So if he wants to win it, he's got to not just pass the, uh, the 85 car, he's got to spin him or do some damage. But the former one ends there. Doing it comfortable now out the front. Of course, winner of the New Zealand Championship back in Stratford in the early noughties. Was the youngest champion. Still that record stands today. Wade. Hamilton Rumney. It was Hayden Hart was the points leader going into it. He started right down the back on grid 26. He's up into ninth place now. But still a lot of work to do. He's seven points behind as Wade sits on 74 and Hayden Hart on 67 so the 166 he'll make a pass here Willie is the we see one car drifting wide is that Alex Hill and 
Jared Wade looking pretty comfortable right now. Mike Ranger gets bunted out of the way from Thomas Stanaway. Just off the podium at the moment. Well, I tell you what, Hamilton and Hart. We could have a runoff. The second place in tier two at the moment. No, Hayden Hart's just made another pass. Nine laps gone. Jared Wade in control. Is Jamie Hamilton closing the gap? Not really, still sits around that one second mark. It'll be white flag this time around for the 85H. Make that K. Just a little bit slower through the corner that time. With <laughs> Jamie Hamilton, maybe some false hope. But the Kiki car runs through takes the win, and with it, first place in the PTS Logistics Tier 2 Championship. So Wade from Hamilton and Rumney, the top three in the race, but the top three in the championship, it'll be Jared Wade on 74 points, from Hayden Hart, 68 points, and Jamie Hamilton, 9G on 67. Right, uh, Mintek, we've got we got the official results through. We've got uh, uh, we've got one more minute, I think. So I'll Mintic, give you one minute. So, are you going to do the official results? You yep. do that, and I can give you some quick updates on outs and ins after that. All right. Oh no, you you got you go. Righto, we can guarantee 19 M's out. We've got 71 P out. We've got 81 R out. 106 H out. 591 P out. Doubtful 54S, still can't find oil pressure on that car and why it has died. Um, Dale Robinson, he said, my car overheated and it automatically shut down, it's cooled down, we will be back out for the next one. The one NZ of Randall Tarrant, they got no idea why it stopped, it's now running, it's running fine, maybe they think it got over hot and it stopped down, these things are running stinking hot on the radiators. Jack Myers is all good to go, it's going to be one hell of a last heat and the meetings have started. We're seeing uh, some of the cars from the Gisborne area floating around, some of the people from the Palmerston area. We're seeing some of the other cars from the Bay area floating around, some of the cars from Auckland and, and the Hamptons and all that sort of stuff. So I think we're in line for one Hoor of a Teams race. Build it, make it, fix it, shift it, tow it, stow it, dig it, lift it, blow it, trim it, grind it, chip it. It, saw it, clean it, nail it, polish it. 0800 24-7 rent. I hire, we hire it. 0800 24-7 rent. I hire, we hire it. Just quickly, Paul. Yes. Peter Bengston, what's the plan? <laughs> Give it all. 26, uh, 25th starting grid. Got any mates out there? Well, not really, because all our palmy boys are up there, so you just got to drive on alone, isn't it? You know, stand alone. So we'll give it the best, see what happens. And coming from the back you've got to go hard fast and get some breaks eh? Yep, yep that's all it is hopefully you don't get spun up too much and move. Good luck out there mate. Thank you. So this is the PG Hydraulics Championship the Tier 4 um, so there are trophies on the line for the top three in this championship only four of them making it out there uh, so we'll obviously jump straight we've got Heat 3 coming up after this race but I think we might have a bit of tight like it's uh, with losing those couple of uh, groups it does mean there's a, there's a tight turnaround and the, we've had not had a lot of stoppages in the races since uh, since that last heat barry so um, so we may end up with a, a little bit of downtime I wonder if Waikato and Rudrua won the third team's race tiebreaker yeah yeah, they'd be a bit short on cars by now, I think. Yep, Craig Chatfield leading from Stephen Royguard, Carl Southall, and Carl Pegg uh, out there in this heat. So with the updated points, we'll be able to analyse that uh, for you immediately following this race, and uh, we'll check in with Minty and maybe be anchored down in the, the pits as we count down the final minutes before Heat 3, find the winner of the 
2021 New Zealand Superstock Championships. So out front, and, oh, just uh, Charles about to say Chatfield out front, but he drifts it wide in turn two. And uh, Roy Gard up the inside to take the lead. So Nick Davey hasn't made it back out there, but at the moment, well, he's actually still going to finish in third place in the championship. Because he's earned 51 points from his two heats. And from three heats here, Chatfield and Southall won't even reach, can at the most reach 50 and 48 respectively. So Stefan Roygaard leads the race in the 58 car. Be straight after the pool. And he is onto the main straight. So he looks comfortable for the championship. Carl Pegg in the 15A will finish in second. And then Nick Davey, 26P, will be third. So eight laps gone. For these guys, a tough night. Last night for all of them. Hence the reason they're down in the Tier 4 event tonight. And so easy to just pack up and go home and think, well, it wasn't for me, but great to see the commitment of these drivers to still come back and compete, despite that fact that bad night last night and uh, down in what the lower grades I think it's a pretty surprise a lot of people actually the numbers that we have had return so around about 90 tonight obviously from the 132 last night we have lost 40 you would say that uh, 10 to 15 of them were damaged anyway and of course another big weekend coming up the Grand Prix, New Zealand Grand Prix for the Super Stocks. Oh, here we go, Craig Chatfield. He was going to have a bit of a go at Roy Gard. Right before the chicken flag, Roy Gard takes it though. Okay, so just confirming there in the PG Hydraulics Championship, it'll be Stefan Roy Gard who will take the win uh, with 73 points. Carl Pegg, 15A on 68 points, will be second overall. And Nick Davey, even though he didn't start that heat, will finish on 51 points. All right, uh, Minty, very quickly. Paul, uh, down here with Kyle Fraser. You are in a position, Wanganui, a few years ago, going into the third heat, it was all on. What's going through the minds of these drivers now? Because it's going to be a team's race, isn't it? Yeah, I think, um, hey, you know, at the end of the day, sometimes it's good for club mates to, you know, stick together, but... I think you find these days there's a lot of guys that aren't club mates but they're still best mates, you know, so um, it's all about working with your mates out in this final heat, you know. What's going through the driver's head as you as a driver now? What was going through your head before that third and final heat? Well, um, I was top on points uh, going into it, but um, look, at the end of the day, Minty, I hadn't even won a raffle when I was <laughs> won my New Zealand title, so I just thought, oh, I'll just do whatever I can and it'll be nice to get my name in the paper. <laughs> well, you managed to do that. Hey, Kyle, look, thanks for your time. It's getting it's getting tense. It's time, is it? This third heat, this is what it's all about from a week of waiting, isn't it? It certainly yeah, is. Yeah, uh, I've been over with Randall Tarrant. You know, I, I help Randall and, and sort of try and give him a bit of guidance going into these events. And um, he's doing good. He's You know, I, I said to him, if you can finish in the uh, top ten, you'll be doing awesome, you know. This will turn into a bit of a team's race, I hope. It will indeed. Thanks, Kyle Fraser. Back up to you, Paul. It is tense down here. They're on the dummy grid. They are arriving. We know that there's five cars missing at yep. least. And uh, the 54S looks like they're still trying to get all pressure in that car. Bianca from the Pits uh, TV team, she is down in the pits as well and excited about this big final heat. I can't tell you the feeling down in the pits right now. I'm here on the dummy grid. The cars are arriving. You can see every single driver's focused. I've gone on, I've given the thumbs up, I get nothing back. I went and tried to uh, grab a couple of drivers for interviews before they got in the car, no one to be found. This is what we've been waiting for guys. 
this is 15 laps away from your New Zealand title champion. I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen at home, crowd, how are we doing? Woo! Let's go racing! Yeah, it is exciting. It is it, it, the atmosphere now getting real thick. Um, you know, you've got drivers in this field who know how to do it. Um, you know, you've got Simon Joblin, uh, William Humphreys, Jason Long, Randall Tarrant, Peter Rees, you know, drivers who have won this New Zealand Championship. They've, they've conquered these three 15 lap heats uh, over the years. Wayne Hemi, unfortunately for him, sitting on the sideline, but another one in amongst that finals field tonight who knows what it takes uh, to win this New Zealand Championship. And it doesn't help them at all, really, just that experience, that. because you just don't know what is going to happen no. after that first corner. You, you, we've heard drivers talk, Minty, about, um, about the friends that they have, the club mates they have, but then you just don't really know. Oh, Bring here it. we go. Bring Make it. Some noise, Paradise Valley. Simon Joblin, two-time New Zealand champion. A little bit too far off the running tonight to make it three. But will he play a role in deciding? We will find out in just a few minutes' time as we welcome finalist Damien Orr to the commentary box. We haven't for, mentioned for another uh, high view of the track. We welcome haven't back. Paul, we haven't mentioned Dale Robinson. What's he going to do? Yeah, oh, exactly. He's a seasoned professional, and he knows he's got head mates, got mates, and he, and yeah, what's he going to do? The unanswered questions, the poses. It's bigger and more dramatic than a Shortland Street end of year <laughs> cliffhanger. You watch that. Hey, no, I don't. You're a shorty fan. That's your problem. I've figured it out. <laughs> Apparently, Jason, uh, the Pits TV, he's a, a big fan. We won't hold it against him. Josh Prentice with a problem. He's pulled around straight back for the pit gate. He's going to go straight for three minutes by the looks of it. Just to add to the tension a wee bit more. And you would imagine that uh, that Josh Prentice, uh, 27 points in 20th place in his 7th place, uh, driving a Peter Rees car. Now it's not just a, a Rees built car, this is this is the car that Peter Rees built at the beginning, well, the, the extra car that Peter Rees had at the beginning of this season. Uh, and Josh Prentice has ended up at the wheel of it, so he's, he's integral, he's in, an integral part of the Rees race team. Now, he's Josh wanting Prentice. help. Just for the three minutes. Yes, we've gone three minutes. He's got the OK. Where is the Prentice crew? Are they here? Are they running? No, we'll, we'll wait on Prentice. He's set to start this one on grid 16. So that's the outside row. So we'll see most of them pull up. Really have I seen Jason Long not wanting to talk, not wanting to sort of interact. Like he's always had a yarn with me. This one was just put the hand up, walk away, Minty. Yep. And uh, you respect that. You don't start bowling there. But Jason Long, he's got the eyes on. He knows where he's got to come this, from. Peter Bengston, the same. This has to be the drive of Jason Long's life. You know, if, if they can't stop those Reese cars, he needs to come to at least second to, to beat Asher. Now, Jason and, Long. Uh, yep. From grid 26. Yeah. When he won uh, in Christchurch, 22.99 were his grids. And I think, you know, he, I think he was kind of. Had a bit of help from the Reeves team in that mm. one. And he um, runs a Reeves car, latest model. Yes. All the trick stuff on it. So is that a foot in the Reeves camp or is it a foot in the Hawks Bay camp? Well, you know, I think in this in this battle here, when they're head to head, unlike last time, they were kind of out of the running, although Peter still did end up runner up that year. Uh, I think it might have been a bit of a gentleman's agreement, yes. maybe. Um, but tonight, well, might be a, could be a whole different ball game because they, both the two Reeves boys are right there. Well, they, well those, those two are sitting in the box yeah. seat. If they're not stopped, they've got this thing sewn up. Is Jack up. Myers out there? Should be. Yes, yep. He's lined up right in behind Peter Rees. Okay. Yes, yeah, sorry. Is so Peter we'll, going to stand on well, the brakes? I was just going to say, will we see the 10G on the brakes <laughs> right off the start? I just couldn't see him and I thought, where is he? Where's Rees? Where's Jack? Um, Randy Tarrant right behind uh, the 127G of Ethan Rees right behind Dale Robinson in the 89. Is Dale going to sit on the brakes? The 48M, he's sitting there, the 98M. Oh, this has got the makings of everything. And Jason Long sitting right down in corner four, not wanting to grid yet. Bonnet closes on the 5G of Josh Prentice. 
water problem with that uh, car was overheating already it's been overheating tonight lots of car overheating problems these cars haven't had time in between each race to get their temperature back down so they just get hotter and hotter and hotter so ladies and gentlemen Prentice comes around he will set, take his spot on the grid grid 16 so he will pull in behind the 94 of William Humphreys Steve Hampton back out in the 66. Will he go for an immediate payback on McKee or will it be one that holds? And There's been a discussion about that. Uh, they've been down and seen Steve and said, hey, look, uh, here we go. Just but behave a bit. They are side by side. As we check out this grid, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, race fans, can you feel it? I can. It's it's electric. This is just electric. It's so quiet. I think everybody up in the stands is the same as me. It's uh, what the hell's about to happen? Is it a Kiki and re rerun of all those years ago? Five rollovers. I don't think so. Maybe not. Maybe yes. But are some cars going to be stopped to change the outcome from the end of heat two points? Brownie, I don't know, mate. But this is uh, okay. got everything. Race fans, this is it. We have waited to find the 2021 New Zealand Superstock Champion. We've got down to potential six. It could be even more than that, the way things erupt. Technical Welding Services 2021 Heat 3 Championship and we're underway. And straight away, look at this, McKee and uh, Hampton resume their battle. Turned around as Mark Costello rees up the wall. We got two of them riding high down in turn number two. Who's going to get out of there? Who's going to get away? Jack Myers caught up and that lost a lot of ground. He's dropped down towards the back. We will go red. Ethan Rees is in the middle of that. So that's your points leader gone. And Pete Rees there too. And of course the McKee-Hampton battle has turned into corner one. They're <laughs> into each other on the wall. There are five, <laughs> six cars tied up in there. Rees and Rees will both be taken out I think because they're both up the wall how well, are they going to sort this out okay well I, th I think the first thing they've got to do is they've got to give them all the chance to get out don't yes, they yes yes uh, we've got the replay on the screen it was just that big squeeze um, Josh so, Prentice in there too so you've got you've got potentially three of that Rees crew Prentice, Jack Myers dodged it luckily yes, yes. Uh, so you've got Prentice Peter Rees and Ethan Rees who are in there so Costello got two turned around. Hum, oh, Prentice. Hum, Who hum, did Prentice come in and hit full noise? Humphreys in there. Was that Humphreys that Prentice went after? The 98's in there. The 127's in there. The 5G. And who's that up the wall? Yeah, look at that. It was Josh Prentice. Uh, it's book. Uh, is that Dale Robertson? No, I'm just trying to... It is. It's Dale Robertson. The 89G up the wall. 89W, sorry. Robinson's up the wall. So, um... Josh Prentice just came in and turned a hard right yes. on William Humphreys and drove into him. So here we go, Prentice is, is out. Yep. So now they'll they'll give will they give Humphreys the chance to extract himself. If Humphrey pulls out, Rees is gonna roll on his side. The 127G is hooked up on the back and over the front of Costello. That's gonna be a challenge. So if Humphreys can't get out, the rest of these cars are all gone because they can't extract themselves. So here we go. Here comes the go from Humphreys. He's been told to move. The crash crew are out of the road. So Humphreys is now going to get given the chance to get out. If Peter Rees rolls, he could roll on top of his son's car <laughs> and that will take him out. Oh, this is drama. You said Shortland Street. This ain't Shortland Street. This is better than this. So William Humphreys, who are they going to let out first? Because you've got Costello holding up Robinson, you've got Humphreys holding up Rees, and you've got the 127G stuck in the sandwich in the middle. Referee goes in there and said, it's time. Is Humphreys going to say I can't get my car started and take the whole damn lot out? Well, if he it, can't start... But he's still a potential too. And especially now if you take, uh, take the yeah, 127 Yeah, but if he can't start, that's just taking everything oh, out. Yes. And mm. Joblin's on the tail of the 126K. Um, and I had a rumour on that too. What, payback Joblin on Vickery? No. No? Sorry, on the... Oh, on the, on the Rees. Well, not so much payback, but stop. Well, wheels off Dale Robinson's car. He's going to be getting out. 
Peter Rees, they're looking at him. Is he going to climb out of his car? Because there's no way if uh, Humphreys gets out that Rees' cars won't roll. There he is. They out of the car. Him, so he's called it quits. He's got a choice. Oh! oh! Takes a big tumble oh. to Robertson. <laughs> So one corner for him after the car not quite working properly. Now is so, Peter Rees going to get out of the car? Now this is this is the, the, all of a sudden you've lost a, a potential of a whole lot of action in this third Yes. Eight, uh, which you, you, if so Humphreys you, can't move, that's then gone. The yeah. whole five cars all gone. But obviously, otherwise by now Humphreys would have thrown his arms up in the air and said no. Well, they held him up. They went across there and waited until we've got the yeah. two people, the drivers out of the cars above you, out of the cars. Referee's going back and saying, can you get the car going? I don't think he's going to be able to start. He's just sitting there and saying, I can't start it. Oh, is this cunning? More drama. So it was Mitch, uh, it was Josh Prentice in the five car who came in and put the big hit into the side of Humphreys, and that's potentially locked the other two yeah, cars I'd, in there. I, let me, let I think he, Ethan's asking for a chance to try and get out himself, himself. in the middle of the whole lot. Yes. Which I, I think he should be able to do. He's got two cars in front and two cars behind. It's a lot of weight to push, oh, isn't yeah. it? But he does have two rear wheels on the ground. The problem we've got, Brownie, is the fact right. that uh, Costello's car and Reese's car, they've gone bumper to bumper, nose to nose, and they've locked their front ends together. So they're okay. attached across the top of each other. All they right. will not can, get out by we, driving. We've got officials down there. Move, can we, everybody please move off the fence? Can we please get away from the fence, please, everybody people? Because off uh, the fence. if they try and move these cars and you're there, they can't. So when we get everybody back, we'll have a chance of starting these cars. So please move now. Come on, move. The got deal is... So we got our Speedway New Zealand officials in the red shirts. They are down there. They are helping. Please move back from the fence. William Humphreys, is that car going to start? Yes, it is. I think he's fired it up. Rees is... Uh, okay, here we go. Here we go. Rees is saying, I want to get out of here, but he's latched on the front of the Costello car. He's not going to get off. They're going to let him try and get out. He's saying Humphreys has got to go. Humphreys is saying, I can't start. There's nothing. He's going nowhere. That front's no. locked in. Yeah. It's a, it's a non-event. He's saying, everybody get out. William Humphreys has got out of his car. A whole lot of other guys have got out of their car. I think you can probably get out. You can get out of your car, Pete. The, the, the Zambuck said, okay, you right, mate? I asked if I could get out. They took me out of the team, so I better ask uh, properly. That's right. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dead right. Yeah. Oh, he's got a sense of humour. He's got a hell of a sense of humour after that massive crew job to change the gearbox. Pete, that was a hell of a gearbox change for one corner. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably would have been better to stay in the pits. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a road around first corner pile up, eh? Well, it's a big pile up. Six cars. Kiki, a lot of years ago, five rollovers, six cars in the first corner. It's changed the whole facet of this race, isn't it? It has, and there's still 14 and a half laps to go. <laughs> We're just going to watch it erupt and unfold now, aren't we? Yeah, we will. Your boy got any mates? Nah. None? <laughs> nah, he'd be right. You wouldn't tell me if you did anyway, would you? Uh, well, Josh is still going, and yeah, there's some still out there. I don't know. Where's Jack? Behind you over here. Oh, oh yeah, so uh, that's cool. Yeah, it's going to unfold in front of us. Pete's up there. What do you know where Jack was for? Oh, because he's up there, and so is Pete. So, yeah, we'll see who's mates, uh, mates of Asa shortly. <laughs> Jason Long coming from the back as well. It uh, could be a little bit of mates and mates and mates. He's made up about uh, seven or eight places already. He's down here, look, just over here. He's made up about 15 Most minutes. Left, to be fair. Sorry? Don't look like many cars we left, to be fair. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were, we're down six, and suddenly we're down six more, so we've only got 13 cars left on track. At uh, wholesale tyres in Fakatane. Need truck tyres? Wholesale tyres. Good tyres, better prices, great people. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, race fans, we are go in the green. That's. Oh, now we go. So the 126 of Asher Rees. He is the driver in control at the moment. 
Josh Prentice, what role can he play? He's got some steering issues, I think, well, looks a bit yep. poor. They were four wide momentarily there, coming off turn number two. So looking at Vickery and Benston as well. They are badly, remember, they are tied for points. So Makita, the infield. He just got spun around by Hampton, he's just rejoining. Oh, uh, yes, too. So the one, two, six of Asheris is your race leader. Then it's Joplin, Booker, Tarrant and Levine. A little bit of a coming together there between Quinn Ryan and Brett Nichols. So Mitch Vickery's got the jump on Peter Benson at the moment, but they are tied at the moment on 62 points. Oh, Benston, right in the concrete wall in the 58, gets spun. Costly for the 58P. But look at this, he's right back on the gas straight away. Ash has got a shadow behind him. Josh Prentice has jumped in behind him. He has smart drive from Prentice. And Peter Benson's gone. The 58 pulls to the infield. So it's Jason Long now. He's up into eighth place on 63 points. Mitch Vickery sitting on 62. But it's our all Asheris. Half distance gone in this third heat now. Trying to pick up Jack Myers, no way off the pace. So Rees on 68, Long 63, Vickery 62. Asher Rees just taking this oh so easy. Josh Prentice just slowing that pace down. As Simon Joplin sits in second place, Keegan Levine makes a pass up the inside of Booker. And at the moment it's Mitch Vickery, the 26. He could pull the six off that car at the moment. But Long's made another pass. So Asher Reed's on the 68 points. Jason Long, 63. Now Vickery's just moved up. He's made another couple of passes. He's up to 64. So keep your eye on the 41 of Jason Long. He's got three cars in front of him. Can he make another couple of passes? As the laps tick down, three to go. On turn two, Ryan gets squeezed out. Jason Long jumps through, makes a pass. Quinn Ryan has a tries to get back in, slotted behind him. It'll be white flag next time around for Asher Rees. The battle's still on. We are tied, Vickery and Long. Are both on 64. The white flag drops. Another family joins the list of winners of the New Zealand Superstock Championship. Along the pit straight, the chicken flag falls for 126. Asheris emulates his father Peter's feats of winning the New Zealand Superstock Championships and the Stock Car Championships. A safe, stable drive for your new New Zealand champion. Provisionally, Asher Rees takes the win on 68 points. Jason Long finishes in fifth place with 66. And Mitch Vickery will finish on 64 points. And they are your new one, two, three. Two key, key cars on the podium. And here comes the chequered flag. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, he gets to carry the chequered flag. He wins heat three in shades of 12 months ago. Asher Rees, one, two, six, is your New Zealand super stock champion. And Thumbs he, up from Jason Long. And Ethan can drive out there and enjoy it with him. Well, this is a surprise. They're all driving off the, the track, you know.
They should have been keeping them out there. The top six at least, yeah. Okay. They've all gone. I'll follow them, mate, because I've got to come up to you to pull. We get that 10 minutes and a changeover. And we see if we can't get Reese as he comes round. There they go. What about making some noise up there as he comes round the corner? Look at that. It's a reese thon Mitch Ricker, if we can, just quickly as you cool it down. How are you, mate? I don't even know what you said. How you doing, mate? Three NZ potentially. Two cars with the three NZ for another week. Ah, oh, that'd be nice. Uh, but I mean, it was a uh, hell of a race. It was bloody hot out there, man. I'm sweating like a pig. Whew. What's this mean to you, getting this in the super stocks? Well, so what was that, sorry, mate? What's what's three NZ mean to you in super stocks, mate? Oh well, all I can tell you is that last week I wasn't even going to do this event. I was over it. I had no motivation, and my mate Tony said, "Nah, man, go." See if you can qualify, and if not, we'll sit on the bank and drink some person. Well, now we're here. Mate, look at that smile. Congratulations. You're shot, aren't you? You've had enough. Ah, uh, it's awesome, man. Stoked. Here is Mitch Vickery. What can you say? He is just excited. This uh, uh, Jason Long's floating down here, and I'll I'm come just, back to you, Paul. Yeah, I'm just uh, standing outside the referee's office at the moment, and okay. uh, they are just consulting, and we'll get a uh, confirmation Let's as soon as we fire can. Let's here now if we can. Jason Long. Hell of a drive for 2NZ, wasn't it? Yeah, well, uh, it's quite hard when you're starting uh, off the back of the grid for their last heat and you've got to make up all those places. Um, but, yeah, absolutely stoked. Um, yeah, you, I kind of got 2NZ and never thought I'd get close to coming one. And then, uh, yeah, we've gone and done it again. We're back on the podium. So, no, absolutely stoked. She's been a big old week and, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting home. Six cars out in the first corner, that made a hell of a, 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 a hell of a bonus for you, wasn't it? That six you didn't have to pass. Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, like a lot of my mates in there too, which is a bit disappointing. But uh, yeah, in terms of what, um, yeah, the final result for me, it, it helped me a lot. So, nah, absolutely stoked. Um, yeah, as I say, she's been a massive week. Uh, can't thank my crew and family enough for all their support. And, uh, and also uh, to all you out there in the crowd, You've, you've hung around and she's been, been a long old week as I say and you've stuck to it and, and made the meeting what it is tonight so thanks for staying. Is there a wonderful thing looking forward we can both, you and me both too now and that's going home to our own bed? Yeah, I'm driving straight home tonight and I'll be getting in it so I can't wait. <laughs> we'll see you about Saturday or Sunday won't we? <laughs> yeah, that'll be about it but nah, again thanks to uh, the Road Rural Club you put on a massive meeting, um, really gutted that it didn't go to plan like you guys wished but uh, you've turned it around in a short time and, and it's been bloody awesome, so thank you very much. Mate, congratulations. Jason Long, there is the 2NZ and I'm not sure if uh, Paul Hickey's got yeah. his microphone. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm wandering over towards you, Minty. Uh, we'll leave Asherese, he's way over the back at the moment. Well, Paul, that had everything. Yeah, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are set to do a presentation on the infield. Uh, you, uh, you want to have a quick word with We'll wait till we put him on the podium. We'll wait till he gets on the podium. Uh, he's got a big smile on his face, Asher Rees, as he should. We will hold off until we have the presentation hey. to have the official word to him as we get that set up. Now, remember the little story from driver's briefing on the first night that got rained off? Yes. When 132 names were called, 131 drivers answered. Asher Rees was missing, having a bit of a lie down somewhere and had the Rotorua Club not sent one of their club members to find him, he would have been excluded from the meeting. Ask him how his headache is now. Dare I do that now? Yes. I'll wait for you, but I'll wait for Paul. No, we're not <laughs> going to do that. <laughs> we're not going to go But that, that just shows how close. If nobody had gone to get him, he would not have even been in this event. Yep. It's all those things that go on as you start to drive through. And... Uh, Ethan Rees comes out to see Mitch Vickery. And then again, you've got... Uh, I'm going to grab this lady over here while we're, we're mucking around a little bit. I want to see her over here if she runs off. I need you for a second, my sweet. Mrs Hickey, you got to stop, sweetheart. It, 
It's been a hell of a week, but God, God, you've done a good job. Thanks, buddy, and thanks for everybody for hanging in there when it was just raining and raining and more raining. Big thanks to the competitors that came back and back and back. Um, congratulations to the winner. Thanks to TWS and PDS for sponsoring the event and all the others as well. Thanks to my amazing staff. There's only one reason this place works like it does, and that's the team we've got here at Paradise Valley Speedway. TWS Paradise Valley Speedway. Thanks to everybody. Thank you. You just put your hands together for Sonia. This lady has worked her butt off. And uh, Sonia, love you to bits, chick. Thank you for letting me come and be part of just a wonderful meeting. How cool is that, eh? That is the lady behind the Speedway. There's a, a big group of them, but Sonia is something pretty damn special when it comes to organisation. Well, Paul, is it your time now, Paul? Well, I think we're not far away, just waiting for official word. Okay. Okay, we've got our meeting sponsor. We've got Colin Ashton from Technical Welding Services, uh, who is going to come over and join us at the podium as well. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what a night it has been, and we thank you for, as uh, has been mentioned, your perseverance and sticking with us across the course of the last few days. It's been a big weekend of racing, three, four, five, six nights, you could almost call it, but we now have a new New Zealand Championship podium for the Superstock class for 2021. It is now time to celebrate and invite those podium finishers to celebrate here in the infield at TWS Paradise Valley Speedway, finishing in third place, 26. 6K, Mitch Vickery! And we've got Colin Ashton over here to present the sash, the trophy and the cap to Mitch. And there is the trophy. Mitch Vickery, well, uh, Mindy's already had a, a quick chat here, but congratulations, how are you feeling? It's, it's certainly not what you were expecting at the start of this meeting. Yeah, no, you're right. Uh, like I said to Mindy earlier, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was just over it. I was, I was no motivation, way too busy with work. Just, I was just going to pull the pin, sit back and watch, and Tony's like, nah, nah, see if we can qualify. And yeah, here we are, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked. And um, I'm just stoked for all my sponsors and, and my old man and my crew, just everything they've put into this for me. And um, this one's definitely for them, eh? I wouldn't be here without those guys, so yeah, it's, uh, yeah can't say thank you enough, the, the hours they've put in, and, and I guess, yeah, it's going back to sponsors, eh? Wangaroo Toyota and Central Equipment Movers, the, those guys just backed me from day one through and through, just, um, I wouldn't have even had a start in Superstock careers without these guys, so, and uh, yeah, of course my mum, my dad, they got me started in the sport, and yeah. Oh, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> You're going to step up there and take your place as 3NZ. Ladies and gentlemen, Mitch Vickery. <laughs> He's been 2NZ before. He's also worn the coveted number one. But this year in 2021, oh so close, but a deserved 2NZ, Jason Long. And these amazing trophies. Well, Jason, uh, another small number on the car, continuing a, a great run for you. Going into that last heat, you had a lot of work to do, though. Yeah, I was a bit nervous, to be fair. Um, I guess when you, you've been there and done it before, the pressure's off a little bit. But, um, yeah, we obviously wanted to get up there and, and do it for my crew and that. But, yeah, we are pretty close. But when uh, Ash is starting on the front and I'm on the back and he's done the, the hard work already, um, yeah, it was pretty tough. So... Absolutely stoked to have a number two on the side of the car again, and uh, yeah, we just, yeah, I don't know, we're over the moon, so yeah. It's been a big few days for everybody, how do you, how, how do you keep your head in the game? Yeah, it has been a long few days, um, no, really lucky that, um, yeah, my mum and dad have decided to stay around and uh, leave, leave their workshop, so um, yeah, no, really, really big thanks to them for a start. Um, Ozzy, he's stuck with me the whole time. He's um, yeah, the, my crew guy that's there every week. Um, and then my brother, uh, Jeremy and, and Matt, come back up to help today. And then obviously my partner, Amanda, she's been at home looking after the kids. And 
doing her best to uh, get up here, but she finally got the chance, and um, yeah, it's been good to have her here for a couple of days too, so. Jason Long, two wins here. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations. Cheers, thank you. And well, in the sport of super stock racing, there are some famous names and some famous families. And we talked about a lot of them earlier on tonight at our pre-show. There are fathers and sons over the years who have stood atop and taken glory in the New Zealand Superstock Championships. And now another father-son combination can be added to the list. Following in his father Peter's footsteps, your new New Zealand Superstock Champion, Asha Rees. So we've got Colin Ashton from Technical Welding Services to present the special trophy that have been made by the Rotorua Stock Car Club, the sash and the hat. We'll have a quick chat to Asher. First off, man, how are you feeling? Uh, a bit overwhelmed, to be honest. Um, been a long way to, uh, to get here. I've stopped a few of my time at this championship. Um, so it's an honour to be on the step, but uh, obviously the five days or whatever it's been to be here now has paid off in the end. It has been a long few days for everybody. What was going through your head as, as those days kept on uh, turning into more postponements and cancellation? Did it did it affect you? No, nah, not really. I was just more or less worried if I was going to run out of clothes or not. Um, <laughs> other than that, nah, it's just, it is part of it. Everyone was in the same boat, so we just all pushed on. You Like you say, you've been around a long time and you know, you know how to win championships. This is the big one, uh, of course, though. Uh, after that first heat, you did so much good, good work in that heat to put yourself into the position. Were you feeling confident after that? Uh, not really. That first heat was probably my worst heat. Um, the second heat definitely was my drive, um, 26. I don't know where I ended up, but we made a few places and got uh, good points. So I was nervous under that feature, but it is what it is, and we come out on top. Uh, there were obviously some big plans going into that last heat which went out the window in the first corner but from there did you feel comfortable with with the car and, and the track over those last few laps? Definitely felt comfortable, the car was uh, coming on as the track was going away so we set that up right and yeah it was just a good car all round. As they always are, big weekend for you, one NZ on the side of the car, a lot of people who helped make it happen. Oh 100%, uh, there's a lot of sponsors on the car and I'll, no, I'll forget them but the Cobb Maka Motorsport, RDL Group, Barry's Firewood, Rees Race Cars, everyone who's chipped in, there's Porter Group on there, everyone's chipped in, no matter how little, how big, they're still part of this, and even the 13 years getting here, so it's a big time and big thing for me. It certainly is, and I know there's a lot of supporters who are so uh, happy for you. We have the trophy, you have the cap, you have the sash, we have the special flag for you, but that over there is what it's all about. From defending champion, departing champion, to your new champion. Jump up on that top, Seb. Ladies and gentlemen, Ethan Rees. Oh, sorry, Asher Rees. <laughs> So we get Colin in. So you're one, two, three in the 2021 New Zealand Super Stock Championships here at TWS Paradise Valley Speedway. Three NZ, Mitch Vickery. Two NZ, Jason Long. And your one NZ, Asher Rees. Put your hands together for our podium this weekend as we celebrate with the meeting sponsor from Technical Welding Services, what an amazing few days it has been. It has been tough on everybody. To the crowd that is still here as we approach the end of the night, this has been your Rotorua Stock Car Club and Technical Welding Services presented New Zealand Super Stock Championship for 2021. Congratulations to Asheries. So as they go through the ceremony there, ladies and gentlemen, we wish you well on your way home. And just a gentle reminder, in 12 months' time, I'm sure you're all looking forward to being in Huntley International Speedway on the 6th, 7th and 8th of January. What a weekend that's going to be as, uh, as we do it all again. What an amazing night it has been, Bianca. I tell you what, we've had 
everything. We've had the rain, we've had the sun, we've had the drama, we've had the stop goes. Oh, apologies. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. The fade is down up in the up in the comms box for uh, our crowd here. I think it's the mm, second one from yeah. the right, Barry. Maybe just push that one up. I don't know. So, look for me, Paul. I've just got to put one thing to you and Sonia and the crew. Thanks for the invitation, eh? This is just uh, one of the most wonderful things that uh, I've been part of. <laughs> been a long week, but does it get any better than this? Surely not. Surely not. Uh, to the pits and everybody around the world. Mate, this has made my night. I'm going to go home, find my own bed. <laughs> Damn, I need my own bed. And uh, Bianca, thanks for being part of this and your crew and all those sorts of things around the world. Hey, no problem. The crew is uh, definitely looking forward, like you, Minty, to uh, getting home. We want to thank you all for sticking with us. We want to thank you all for uh, streaming in. We hope to bring you some... Uh, action here again in Rotorua in just a couple of weeks for the World 240s. We're heading down south now. We're going to go and give our congratulations to Atha, uh, sorry to Asha and to Jason again and then of course to Mitch. So thanks guys, we hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll see you again soon.